Okay. We are live. <laughs> we got me, Kyrie's Clark, and we got the one, the one and only, the lead, the living legend, the fine, the fine man with a with a million dollar smile, DC Soap Sanctuary. Introduce yourself to the people. As you guys know, I'm DC Soap Sanctuary, fellow soap content creator. We're all soap lovers. Are welcome tonight. I am live on Clark Industries, ladies and gentlemen. We got the VP and Troll Affairs. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So leading into the first question of the night, are you Team RJ or not? Now, me, I'm Team RJ, which is shocking to me because you know he's a Logan, right? And you know how I feel about those Logans all around. But um, I just feel he was right. Zenday never respected his relationship with Luna because he's jealous that RJ is the golden boy because – his mother slept her way through the Forrester family. So, you know, Brooke walks around with the extra privilege. So I feel that Zenday takes it out on RJ about Brooke and her caringness because Brooke slept her way up and down that Forrester family. So he just he just got to snooze but right in. He's Ridge's son. So Zenday just thought that he, but because RJ's a nice guy, I feel like Zenday just thought he could just take that out on RJ and that didn't think that nothing was going to happen to him. But, you know, after a while, you know what they say about good men? They have their limits. And now we're seeing that with RJ. Like you saw when RJ busted in that door and said, you son of a bitch. He was he was on one. He was ready. And then I think that genuinely that punch that we just saw right there, Zenday wasn't expecting that. He didn't think that RJ would do that. He thought RJ just gonna sit there and cry. And I do know, no, um, Zenday, you woke up, you woke up the bear. So I'm here for RJ and all of his shenanigans. You know, I definitely say that I am probably team RJ as well, actually. Um I'm not a fan of the Logans, but, you know, honestly, I feel like I don't know what Zenday was expecting. You know, you're with your cousin's girlfriend. Like, this is none of this is going to end well as a result. Um, I feel like Zenday is being very naive. At the same time, Luna doesn't want him. You know, if a woman has to, like, I feel like when you're trying to date someone, they're taking this long to figure out they want. You are not. This is not the person. They don't, they don't want you. She obviously wants RJ. You are a mistake, mm -hmm. you know, and it's best you just excuse yourself to the side. But instead, he, he keeps wanting to pursue this. And it's like, where do you think this is going to go? You already have the whole drug thing going on there with that, which is making this very controversial within itself. And then on top of that now, now you want this embracing by RJ, which is not going to happen, unfortunately. Exactly. I just feel like, and then my thing is how Zenday's acting afterwards, too. Like, you know the girl was drugged. And so you basically essayed her accidentally. But you still had the nerve to pressure her afterwards be like, um, Luna, do you really think anywhere in, is there even a part of you that enjoyed us being together? That's when Zenday lost me for good. I was like, no, I'm on team fat chest boy, RJ. I'm here for him. And I'm glad that he punched Zenday and I'm hoping, and I'm looking forward to RJ's wrath going forward because you can only push a good man so far. RJ really wanted to do the right thing. Like, think about it. He, he's all about peace. All the stuff that Thomas did to Brooke and Hope, but he still tried to keep the peace with Thomas, even though he clearly doesn't really like Thomas that much. But he's still a, RJ's a peaceful guy. So he wanted right, to give right. Zenday that same, that same grace. But um, Zenday, I felt, finally pushed RJ too far. So, and my thing is, I do feel that Zenday needs to take some sort of responsibility that he did he could have assessed the situation been like uh we didn't really have no real conversation there was never a plan for us to hook up so now you're just in my bed talking about you were waiting for me when there was no other indication that i was ready for that with you okay am i breaking so, up by the way is my internet connection good yeah you're good okay here. okay i'm making sure i wasn't breaking up okay make sure i was breaking up um mm -hmm. By the way, okay, so, you know, honestly, I have to say that with RJ, I totally get where he was coming from. I, I haven't seen today's b, b by the way. I've only seen GH, but I can. we can still talk. We can still ha talk and hash it all out. We can still talk and hash it all out. Um, I, I'm definitely team RJ because I just feel like Zenay's become very desperate. I hate seeing that on soaps. It's so tired when people are pining after someone that does not want them, similar to Sloan in Days of Our Lives. 
um, Eric. Um, it's just like, you know, this is not going to end well. You're doing all these things to try to keep somebody. And they clearly don't want you. And if anything, I think he would become more attractive to Luna if he took a step back and keep trying to keep propelling himself forward. Because people always like what they can't have, even if they already have it. If there's a little bit of space and distance, something becomes more attractive and more appealing to us. But the more something's on all over us, it's like, okay, we already got you. Like, what, what are you going to do? Like, she already knows that, that Zenday's there as a backup in case she needs some. You know what I mean? Absolutely. She's more concerned now about RJ because now she's in a position to lose him because he's a man with morals and values. Mm -hmm. And RJ's definitely upset, upset, but he's mostly upset with Zenday as he should be because I felt like, because think about it. If if some woman or some guy I, I wanted for so long, but, um, but with no buildup, no nothing, they're just laying butt naked in my bed. By the time I get back home, I'm like, uh, I would, it would, it would cross my mind to think they may or may not be under the influence of something. That would, it was just, uh, I felt right. the adult thing to do. Then they could have stopped that situation, and um, but he didn't. What what happened happened. But the way he's going about it afterwards is just making him unlikable. And then why didn't he, at le at the very least, agree to step down from hope from the future, or something like that, or or be like, um, I don't think it's a really good idea. Me and Luna work together. That's RJ's thing. So I'm gonna take a step back and let RJ work with Luna. I know he's inexperienced, but I'll try to help RJ from the side. Let me try to do the uh, admirable thing. But nope, he was glad to make Luna feel uncomfortable. And they talk about, oh yeah, Luna, are you good with this? She's like, no, you know, like you know how this is killing her on the inside. So it's like Zenday is a scumbag. I'm sorry. Yeah, he's pretty selfish because he he really just wants what he wants, and he's making it. He's he's doing what he wants under the guise of Luna. I'm here for you. This is what's good for us, but it's really what's good for him, right? Mm -hmm. And once again, like I said before, am I am I breaking up? By the way, my connection clear? Your connection, you're good. Okay, okay, I'm not sure. Okay, so like I said, if he would just give Luna a break and take a step back for a minute and say, you know, Luna, if you want RJ, fine, but you know where to find me, you know where I am, it's gonna make her think, like, oh my god, like, what about Zenday? But he hasn't given her no space to breathe, to think about it for like a second or two. He exactly. has not done that. And then I, I have an I have an acknowledgement. On it. Hey, Albert, hey, Darby, hey, Spider Quick, and hey, Juan, and hey, Danny. <laughs> I see Spider Quake is in the chat today. <laughs> Yay. Spider Quake is in the chat today. Yay. Spider Quake. My thing wasn't working. And you and you two guys were here. And I want to know about what you two guys think about the H. Probably GH. GH is probably what they meant, maybe. Oh, G yeah, GH. What did I think about GH today? Um Maxi. And Felicia today. I thought um Felicia didn't even raise Maxie. Okay. So what is she talking about that you raised her to be this or that? And um that you raised her to be <laughs> <laughs> this or that and um by quick band. <laughs> he wasn't banned, okay? He was just timed out. Okay, just continue. Just continue on. Just continue what you're saying. Felicia didn't even raise Maxie, so Mac did. And because she was too busy going off with Frisco Jones somewhere. So Maxie, just go go back with that man. Ain't no other man checking for Maxie right now. So um, even though Maxie did lo lose weight, she's looking good right now. Um Okay. Now it's now it says zero people. Like <laughs> You're not gonna touch what one? The 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 weight comment. I'm not even gonna touch that one with the ten people. <laughs> oh no, she, but she lost weight. She lost weight though. She actually looks good. Her and Tracy Abbott. I'm trying to tell you, they got it going on. But I, Tracy I want and Nate actually, for 2025. Huh? Tracy and Nate for 2025. 2025, 2024, 2026, 2027, 2028, and 2029 and 2030. Mr. Tracy Abbott, a.k.a. Nate Hastings. <laughs> Didn't Felicia abandon her kids to go spying around the world? Absolutely. She, that's what she did, Darby. And now you know, it says zero. 
I actually enjoyed, um, yeah, it does say one person watching, um, which mm -hmm. is kind of weird with YouTube right now, but um, I actually really enjoyed um, the scenes with Maxine Felicia today. Um, I feel like it was a warm scene for me. It was warm. And you know what? She's right. Like, sis, just get with Spinelli. You've got, you don't do the whole Elizabeth Weber thing. Just don't do that. You know, three kids, you're for people. Just just pick a man and let's just make it work, sis. Let's just make it work. Well, it. The old man's going to take this from you. Okay, let's just let's make this work. Okay. Exactly. Since Nathan is dead, so he could adopt James eventually. And then Peter's dead, so he could adopt um, Louisa eventually. He could raise all three of your kids together. Yeah. Y'all already had your daughter together that's almost a teenager. So come on, uh, Maxie. We don't got no time for you to waste. There ain't no other man checking for you right now. So Exactly, exactly. And that's the thing. Exactly. And it just feels like, you know, at that point that Maxie should be pretty mm -hmm. knowledgeable at this point to know that Spinelli's the only man that's going to be able to be there for all of this. And honestly, I think what the writers made a mistake on is like trying to have us invested this late in the game because – they should have mm -hmm. been together. I mean, they've been through so much already, Maxi Spinelli. And to wait this long, it's almost like Brooklyn Chase. Like the Peter August thing and the baby and the baby switch thing with Bay Luis was enough to bring them together. But then we needed a more of a stupid storylines to actually be the catalyst, which makes sense. And that's what they're doing now with Maxi Spinelli. Like that storyline, the baby thing was enough. Was enough to bring them together. We don't need all the, the other stupid stuff. Just put them together already. You know what I mean? So that's what I'm ready to see. Hey, Gemini. Yeah, and hey, CJ Clove 18, and hey, Gemini. Let's see. I always hated her and her horror Spinelli. They should, I think they should bring oh, God, oh, I want these yeah. messages are always jacked up. <laughs> I think they bring back the brothers of that doctor's doctor. It's the professional back backdrop for me. Ow, ow, ow. <laughs> yep, the RJ punching. Punch and Zen that 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 was that was the highlight of all soaps by far today. So that was absolutely gonna be my background today. <laughs> and and then DC got the microphone and then um hey hey last day. So DC comes and, and so we DC get comes out again. Hello out. <laughs> absolutely. DC the million dollar man with the million dollar <laughs> smile. Right. You know, I think that today's GH, I was, I thought was interesting was even the scenes with Sonny and Brick today. Mm -hmm. And Brick was like, you know, almost vouching for Dex in a way. And, you know, with Sonny and this whole storyline and Ava's wild hair, it's giving Aswell turns because literally Aswell turns, people have their hair out, out like that Aswell turns. Literally, the world is turning with that hair. <laughs> Well, it's dirty with the hair, you know. Um, but today's GH was actually pretty warm and very interesting. And I watched it live today, which I normally don't watch it live. Um, that was wow. the whole time today I watched it live. Um, but I, I felt those scenes of Felicia and Maxi. I really felt it. And I want Maxi and Spinelli to get to the next step of who they are because Spinelli's very quirky, Maxi's bougie and high maintenance, which is why they go so well together because you can't put two bougie high maintenance people together, it never really works. And so, mm -hmm. you know, what I mean? it, it, it does, but it doesn't at the same time. Like Sonny is bougie and high maintenance, but in a mobster kind of way because he's a mobster. Mm -hmm. That's why. But he's not really a, a bougie man at, at heart. You know what I mean? But he always ends up with a bougie woman. And that's what he likes. He likes a high maintenance woman. I was always, always say that. Sonny likes him a good high maintenance woman. But is that Ava Jerome? <laughs> Crap. I think mean, Ava Jerome is. She's another high maintenance woman i feel like carly yeah. has always been a gritty woman not much mm -hmm. high maintenance until she got with Jax. Jax turned her into that high maintenance you know uh metro court hotel owner kind of vibe in a sense but she was never she wasn't an initially that kind of woman in a sense you know and i feel like she never really challenged sunny in a sense like the other women did and Sonny, like every every man wants a good challenge. Everybody wants to be challenged in a relationship. Trust me, that's what keeps it interesting. If you're not challenging the person, they get bored of you, and might do some things against you at the same time. Exactly. <laughs> you're not you don't want to be as long as they're not, it, it's different between a challenge and a headache. Though, there's a difference. That's true. That's true. you don't. Yeah, you don't. You want you want to be challenged enough, but not have a migraine at the end of it. Mm. That's the difference. As, 
And then CJ Clove 18 says at this point, Zenday needs to remove all contact from Luna because if he keeps trying to contact her, it may look like harassment. He's already borderline that, in my opinion. So I feel, but he's definitely, but I put this in yet in, I, I believe, Sunday's stream. But I think Zenday's definitely going to be the forest of black sheep for a while because unlike with when Thomas was going through his shenanigans, usually Ridge and Steffi stood by him throughout most of it, but um, Steffi would be mad at him for five minutes and then she forgive him and whatever, but I don't think, but I, I think Steffi and, well, we all know Ridge is definitely going to be team RJ. There's no question there. Now, the only one I could see maybe, but then again, not really, because he's too far up Brooks behind, but Eric might say something to try to defend Zenday, but not really because he's too far up Brooks behind. Zenday being the voice of black sheep figuratively and literally. Right? <laughs> <laughs> He's only black forester, right? So figuratively and literally the black sheep of the family. Good Lord. I'm the only black force to be the black sheep. <laughs> I know. But you know, they but I, I was thinking about that, but I think the writers know they can only push that but so far too before because if they treat him too 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 badly, then they already know. Uh yeah, they would get way too much pushback for that. So they're not going to be stupid. So they would have to, like, my thing is they would have to write Zenday in a corner because they can't treat Zenday the way they treat Adam Newman on The Young and the Restless. Because let had Adam yeah. been black and Zenday. It, it wouldn't yeah. fly with us. It wouldn't fly. It just, it, it, yeah. it, like, you know, if, if Adam was the black Newman getting treated like the black sheep, it would, it, I, I get them trying to tell it just like a regular story and they just so happen to be black, but like the optics of it, it just wouldn't look good. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, like they would definitely it look good to us. So, yeah, you know so I don't they? think it's going to be that level, but however, I do feel they could write Zenda in a corner where if they make him like a super villain, where they're like kind of scared of Zenda a little bit, but like because he just do destructive stuff, and then they have to write Zenda off the show, whether Zenda goes to jail or something like that, but I don't think they're going to sit there and treat Zenday the way like Adam like now. Nah, nah, that's not gonna go that way. Yeah, because soaps the way they write villains nowadays is like it's all or nothing. And mm -hmm. that's how it was when spo soaps first started. It was all or nothing. But then through the years we had like an in-between balance because you had villains on the show, like you had Alcazar who was on GH. He was a villain, but like you know, he wasn't irredeemable. He was written in a corner, right? You had Dorian Lord and would like to live. She was a villain, but she wasn't written into a corner. You got Adam Chandler. On days, you have EJ DeMera, but he's not written into a corner. And that's the best way you want to write villains, where there's some humanity in them, where they can still last on the screen, but they're not written in a corner. But also, they're not dumbed down. Like, oh, but they dumbed her down. Because, like, and I guess that was the only way for her to survive on the show, because after you kidnap Robin and you do all this other stuff, how do we actually justify why, how you're, why you're still here? So now we have to completely dumb you down and do all this other stuff and make you, like, up everyone's bunghole in order for this to make sense. But it's not true to Obrick's nature, I felt like. Like, I feel like there's no reason why Obrick hasn't tried to kill Heather by now. Like. Yeah. I mean, Obrick is a mad scientist. Like, exactly. like, like Faison. Would. That's why they fell in love. So, so it's like, where is this? What is this nature coming from? It's so weird. And hey, Dolomedics. Like, how are you doing? Dolomedics. So it's just like to think that, in a sense, like she wouldn't like the way the way Obert was in the past. Like, why can't we still honor a little bit of her history that she is that chick, but she's probably changed a little bit of her way since. You know, just like Ava, Ava is still like a bad girl and she can still be when she want to be, but she's docile down a little bit. They haven't forgotten that side of Ava, but they understand we still need to make her humanized enough to still be here on campus. Yes, cause. After she, they found a way. After she killed Connie, we all thought we all thought that that was gonna work, but like she, she bounced back from that. And then her switching Morgan's pills. But my thing is, what nobody ever really ever acknowledges is that um, Morgan also switched Kiki's pills. Not, I mean, no, Michael's pills. Not that long prior to Ava switching his pills, and they forgave Morgan really quickly. The only thing is, Ava's scheme just went wrong. Um, yeah. it went really wrong. But it was about the same thing. So, um, so Ava coming back from that was 
inevitable, I guess. Um, even though in real life, Sonny would have just killed her a long time ago. He would have just put two bullets in her so long ago and would have been done with that. But in soap opera time, she recovered from that. But um, it took her, them killing off Kiki to finally humanize Ava, though. That made her. Yeah, that was the best way that we kind of like felt for Ava again. We humanized her. Adam and YNR has still not been humanized to me yet. I'm sorry. I was there during the days where all the Adam did. And I know we have to recast the role. It's almost as if we've forgotten all the things that person did. Because, like, nah, it wasn't you. It was the last actor who did that when he was in the role. So, like, we're going to just move on. But I remember all the things that Adam Adam injected poison into his eyes to pretend he was blind, to push a pregnant Ashley down the stairs. He slept with, okay, they had a housekeeper at the time, a St a St Stella. And her nephew, Rafe, was a lawyer who was trying to get Adam a jail. And Adam slept with Rafe to be able to get out of the charges so Rafe would still I defend him. He manipulated him. This is, this is Adam the Newman. You had to change, DC. You don't understand. Adam, Adam is a new man. Him. Mark Grossman came into the role. Adam is a good man now. Justin Hartley was a good man. Mark Grossman, Adam is a good man. Okay, Adam, Adam, when he came back, his brain was all messed up. He, his life was messed up. He just got his memories back. He was trying to merge between Justin Hartley and his own. So, yeah, he tried to, he, he, went, he went about it the wrong way. He tried to get Christian back from Nick to be a little and vindictive. Killed Delia. Uh no, 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 no. That that was um that was Michael Mahoney's Adam. So let's not put that on on no. So no, let's not put that all on Mark Grossman's Adam. And first we of all, he to. we have to. This is part of the character's congruency. We have to. No, but you don't understand. It's not like he he just hit her. He just hit her with no conscience. He did stop and see and see that. And he saw the dog. The dog was okay. And he didn't see Dilly. He just saw her scarf. It's possible that, at, as a matter of fact, and Nikisha to this day still thinks that that rewrite is coming one day, that it wasn't even Adam. It was probably Nikki that hit her with the car. Because Nikki was the one that was drinking and driving that night. If, if you kill someone's daughter, you should always be, like, he does not respect Billy. And it's like, you kill this man's daughter. You can't come to him with respect. Like, if you kill someone's daughter, like, I'm not saying you need to, like, come with, like, a puppy between your legs, but always come with respect. He really tried impressed. to kill him three different times, though. He, he let him have the That's understandable. That's understandable. No, it's not. Like, <laughs> no, it's not. That's understandable. Adam, Adam did that by accident. Billy did that intentionally, okay? Because Adam killed his daughter. Accident or not. Like, Billy's the reason his daughter is dead, though. Okay, Billy's the one that left her in the car in the dark, uh, in with a dog at night. Would you leave your five-year-old daughter in a car in the dark at night? How far am I from the store and from the car? It don't matter how far it is from the store. Okay, he didn't have no child locks on him, nothing. She opened that door and got out. Adam played a part too. Adam played a part too. But and then guess what? Delia's, Delia's eyes are in Connor's eyes, right? Because they gave the, they they transport Delia's eyes to Connor, and so Adam should be grateful. His son can see because of D Billy's daughter, and he's always come with a disrespect to Billy. Think about that for a second. Because yeah. is that, is that fair? Is that even fair? He should be grateful to Billy. It's kind of like how Bobby was always, not how Felicia was always grateful to Bobby for beating his heart for Maxie. That's how Adam should be coming to Billy. Not trying to no. still take him down after he just gave you his daughter's eyes, after you mowed her down. That, but like I said, Billy Billy did not once, not twice, but three times he tried to kill him. Okay, so that's when Adam yeah, finally... Billy tried to kill him. Day, they should be forgiven. They should be forgiven for that. No, he, he already... Hey, Chloe's psycho ass, and, and Chloe still got her, her name in his mouth every 10 seconds. She can't go without trying to sabotage each and every one of his relationships. He has to deal and with that's that. That's another thing, too. Like when Chloe was working for him, he treated Chloe like trash, too. But you killed her daughter. Like, if anything, say, hey, look, no, Chloe, he I'm not he, sure you do, but He was I'm very nice to Chloe. No, he, he was, was very nice and respectful to Chloe. Are you no, kidding me? Not. Are we Darby rewriting his or not, now? Darby, it still happened. He still killed their daughter. He should come with some respect. Years ago. Some humility. I'm not so yeah, then I, how, I, I how about, about where's the humility? Where's the humility? How about after all that, it turns out it wasn't even Adam, it was Nikki. I would okay. love when, to when, when that rewrite comes. Well, we're not in that rewrite era right now. We're in this yes, era right, are, now. right now. I don't we're feel that era. that means okay, they have reasons why they don't like him, but I don't feel that gives them a license to ruin the rest of his life every single day to keep trying to fuck with him either. Okay? I didn't say that, but as a result, he should be a little. He should come a little humble because he is. Why, he is. Why, he doesn't why, why was he trying to take Billy down a, a while back ago? You because can't Billy, 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 Billy
Billy kept coming after him, so he eventually had enough. You can only kick somebody down so many times. Eventually, they stopped beating Rodney King eventually. So come on. Okay, there's that's true. Always, that's true. But there's the thing only is, so much. Adam is still true. human. The same human who pushed the pregnant Ash downstairs. Look. Ashley stole big gaslighter. Same okay, human. Ashley ain't a saint. Human. What made Ashley think she could have another baby by Victor after she Ooh, stole Victor's slap. sperm? After Diane sp- uh, stole Victor's sperm. With Australia, the housekeepers met with Seattle. They were together. Yeah. It was now consensual, right? The same Adam who was probably maybe the reason why Ashley's having multiple personalities after pushing her down the stairs. Ozzy. It ain't got nothing to do with Adam. Yeah. Ashley, Ashley yeah. don't even think about Adam. Ashley don't even think about Adam. Okay. Adam is no way near Ashley's yeah, box. Listen, he, he played a part. He traumatized Sharon. He killed Delia. Let's see who's out there. And Sharon forgave him. A couple other things that Adam did. I'm, but let's not, I'm going to give him a little bit of leeway on that. Any of the good things that he's done. He's done a lot of good things, too. He saved Summer's life. I he saved him. Noah's not life. He saved Faith's life. He saved Nick's life. He say he took a bullet for Victor. He did. He, he saved Billy's life at some point. He saved half of everybody in that town. Okay, as he so, should as redemption. As he should as redemption. As redemption. Okay, that's like yeah, that's his so, duty. You want to you want to name all of his crimes that he did? But guess what? Summer Summer has no right to talk about and to Claire taking a baby. If anyone asks anything about babies. It, have her ask Chelsea. Exactly. Let's not forget, Summer Newman, Nick's daughter, killed Adam and Chelsea's unborn child. Do you forgot about that? I didn't. She They killed, remember when Summer was, was drinking and driving and she killed Riley, Adam's son, with Chelsea? So therefore, and what did and what and how did Nick and Victor and and Phyllis react? They bought Summer a new, they rewarded Summer for killing the baby with a new car. So come on. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to say karma, but you know. No, Adam is a good man. He gave he he has only one kidney walking through his be- through his body right now. He only has one kidney in his body, one functioning kidney kidney because he gave another one to his. Why does he live? Why doesn't he leave Billy alone if he's really good? Why does he leave that man alone? He is leaving Billy alone. He don't want nothing to do with Billy. Okay, Billy's the one that in his his space. All he's telling Billy is, "I don't need your parenting advice. I'm parenting my son." Billy, you done screwed up. All you done screwed up. So there's a man who killed his daughter. So what? Because Billy played played a role in his own daughter's death. Okay, Billy is. Just as much matter of fact, I, I don't disagree with that, charged. but didn't Adam play a role too? But okay, so they both they're both guilty. Now what they're both guilty, they're both guilty. So now okay, I so don't that's what what is his guilt. That's all I want. I'm okay with that. All right, okay I acknowledge that okay. they, all right, if Adam's guilty, then Billy's guilty too. They're both responsible for Bill, for Delia's death. So therefore, so that's why Adam don't want to hear nothing from Billy either. We're even. You're responsible, I'm responsible. Now get out of my face. I, if if you stay out of my way, I stay out of your way. That's that's what Adam's attitude towards Billy is, anyways. He ain't checking for Billy like that. But he should be a, he should be more humble when he's around Billy. That's what I'm saying. A little more humble. He was, child, in the past, humble. but that didn't, that didn't work. Okay, because Billy is gonna always hate him anyways, and then Billy do extra shit. At least Chloe's a little bug that he could squish away, so he doesn't care about Chloe. But um, but he does take a whole lot of Chloe's verbal abuse every single time he sees. He she he sees her. She just rips into him, and he's very tolerant to that. How about you not acknowledging any of that? As he should, huh? as he should be tolerant to that. He killed he killed her daughter. As he should. So we tried to kill Adam like three times. She's the reason. He's she's the reason he lost several years with his son, and and why he had amnesia. But he still. Talk, and if then you, she my job, you gonna have beef with me forever. <laughs> it's just like okay, that's what's going to happen. Have, but first of all, so if Billy really had the guts, they should have finished the job. But they're lucky that Victor has let them live because we all know how evil Victor Newman is. So therefore, like I said, in the, word, in the words of Cardi B, if you kill my child, you gonna have beef with me forever. <laughs> <laughs> forever and ever and ever and ever, ever. ever. But no, Adam is a good man now. And hey, my gorgeous, flawless, wonderful, God's gift to men, Queen Jessica Lovin. Hey, cat lady. I the think real we could all. Know about the Enterprises. 
I think we could all agree that this is all Nick Newman's fault. What's all Nick no, Newman's no, fault? Nick is a good man. Nick is a good man, guys. Wait a minute. Nick is a good Danny man. Danny Ramalotti is a good Oh, yeah. And did you see how, how Christine was playing my boy yesterday? Um, I didn't appreciate that not one bit. She wanted to talk about, oh, uh, I got this this client in this big once in a lifetime opportunity case. Well, first of all, if that was a good friend and a good case, he wouldn't need a fucking lawyer right now. So therefore, Christine, don't be playing with my boy's emotions like this. All right. Christine was really making me mad. Now, rip into her in a more class. He's a good man. You know, the thing was, I felt really bad for Daniel the way. Lily fired him. You can tell when Daniel said, "Listen, I want that. I want that Princess Louisa project for my daughter." Lily, you know how much that meant for me. Lily was just like, "Damn, like I'm hurt, but like you know what? Daniel was right. Like, and I felt that hurt from Lily. I felt that you know Daniel was her first love. Daniel was the one that she really went against the winners is for him. The winners fan for him. Oh, and I don't get her, but like I was talking about Danny, his father, the good man. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's what made me think of Daniel. That's what made me think of Daniel. Now with Danny, <laughs> I just. I, I'm glad he's not entertaining as much as Phyllis's shenanigans anymore because I feel Christine is the right woman for him. Christine has always been a good woman on the show from what I know. And Phyllis has been jealous of her as she's been jealous of Diane, as she's been jealous of Sharon, as she was even jealous of Drusilla. Phyllis is jealous, has been jealous of every woman because she can't be that woman. She's not that woman. She will never be that woman. Phyllis is always the mistress, but never really the wife, even though she has been a wife. She doesn't have the, the spirit and the convictions of a wife. <laughs> like the other yeah, woman in Genoa City does. Phil doesn't have that. Um, Danny, is a t- look, could you please educate um, Cat Lady on what Danny Ramalati's real rating is? She keeps calling him a tip. Danny is, I want to say, a 9.5. This is a good man who stood by Daniel, Daniel Ramalati, who wasn't even his son. Who, who conjured up with Phyllis's antics, right? Who was there for Daniel on multiple occasions when Phyllis could not be there, who gave Phyllis the benefit of the doubt, even all things that she, she did to Diane. Everyone in general turned his back on her, but he did it for the benefit of his family. Is that still a man that you would give a two cat lady? Is that, does that still sound like a man who was a two or a man who was a 9.5? You tell me. Exactly. Um, DC's being extra. See, DC is, is a great man. Now I would have gave Danny an eight, but it's still, but it's okay. Um, a nine point five, I can take that. But to me, yeah, Danny is probably an eight. Um, now Tucker, Nepal, that's who I consider as a two, and I would just turn his balls blue. That's it. Here's the thing, she says, "Nope, DC don't help Kyrie out. I can't give him another one too." Here, here's the thing with Audra and Tucker, if I can just say for a second, Audra and Tucker remind me of two people who like grew up in the hood, and like. They're toxic as F. And then like, you know, but we both from the hood. We both came from the same place. So let's get together. But it's like, you really shouldn't be getting together. And that's all I see when I see Tucker and Audrey together. It's like, I honestly, this is going to sound stupid, but I never thought Weiner was going to go there. And I was like, they never should have gone there. It's almost as if they put like Vicky with Ace on like to live. It's like, why are you, why are you doing this? Like, what, what's happening here? Like, what is this? And it's like, see these two together. It's like, Audra's become now very naive and that's not her. And she knows that her and Tucker are both mischievous, they're both evil, same WhatsApp group. So it's like, why are you with this man? It's like I said, two people from the hood who came from the rough, rough, rough parts of the hood. It's like, you know you should not be together. This is not really a match in heaven. You think it is, because you're cut from the same cloth and it seems to make sense, but it really doesn't. And Dolly Midex, stop with the lies, talking about, no, let me, let me tell you who he really meant. Brady is a four and nothing more. He, he's referring to Brady Black. That's who he's referring to. It's Brady Black. That's a four. I say Brady's about a seven. He's about a seven to me. Stop with the lies. And you still think that Marshall's a seven. So therefore, how can Marshall, I take him? Marshall is a good looking man. <laughs> he, had on that, he had on that red suit that one episode GH. I was like, let me find out. What's up? Oh, let me find out. There's a one DC. So stop let with the lies. Let me find out. To yourself. You know damn well that Marshall is a one. Marshall likes to play the saxophone on his way to bed. <laughs> <laughs> like he does that bloop, bop, 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 bop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey. Listen, how daddy got it going? He had on that red suit that one episode. Gee, I was like, let me find out. What's up, though? Let me find out. Him and Curtis looking good. The father and the son. <laughs> Curtis is about uh, four and a half. So, now nah, I'll give him eight. I, fine, I'll give Curtis a five. Curtis is a five, okay? 
I'm being generous. All right. He's definitely an eight. No. He's definitely Curtis is definitely eight to me. Curtis is definitely eight. He's a good looking man. Him and, and the Bla- father. Blaze is a two out of ten. I'm not crazy about Blaze and Christina, but it's it's kind of warming up on me. I'm like, ah, okay, let's let's see where this goes. They're no Maggie and Bianca for all my children, but I'll, I'll deal with it. We'll make it work. We'll make it work. We all have that one friend that very toxic you keep around to help you do bad things. Do you see hello out? I guess referring to Audra and Tucker. Uh, do you think that Willow is going to sleep with Drew so I could have both mother and sister as me? It- Eskimo buddies. Uh, Eskimo buddies. You know, well, Audra and Tucker, I just feel like Tucker will never love Audra. He wants Ashley. I like Audra better as his henchman. It was new because you've never seen a woman become a man's henchman on a soap. It was new, and I actually kind of liked it. Mm-hmm. But making them lovers, I was like, hmm, I don't know about this. I was like, I would prefer Tucker to be the man that kept her on her toes as like a as an acquaintance, like an evil acquaintance, but not as, as them as lovers. It just, I don't know how to explain it. It just... It just don't work because she's work young, she's vibrant. She's she needs someone like that would actually keep her on her toes. That is like younger and that could really give needs, to, needs a man she can manipulate. Tucker can't really be manipulated. That's the problem with this too. It's like you guys are both manipulators. Two manipulators don't go together. You know what I'm saying? That's not how this goes. You know what I'm saying? Right. She needs a woman. She can manipulate. He needs a woman he can manipulate. But you can't. Two manipulators can't go together. No, I don't. Want, I don't want her back with Kyle. So um. I liked her with Kyle. I was hoping she was gonna be the next Mrs. Kyle Abbott, mm. and then take over Jabot one day, like in a, in a, like it is a takeover out of nowhere. Be like, I'm the new CEO of Jabot Cosmetics, and then it'll be like next week on the Young of the Restless. And then Morphe Dewan says thanks at DC. Curtis is a solid eight. Eh. If y'all say so, Willow and Drew, maybe I could imagine Michael's reaction to finding out his wife slept with his uncle. Who cares about Michael and his reaction? Michael, <laughs> look, Michael is I these days. Michael is a nine. He was always been a nine, nine for me. No, 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 no. Brian Craig is a nine and a half. Like, no, matter of fact, no, fuck that. Morgan is Brian Craig is a ten. So. But if I had to pick between Morgan and Michael, be Michael because I would, I wouldn't mind being the next Mr. Michael Quartermain because here's the thing, well, Michael, Michael, if you marry Michael Quartermain, you got to think about it. You have access to Corinthos Coffee. Well, when Carly was on the Metro Court, you would have had access to Metro Court. You have access to General Hospital because of Monica. You got access to ELQ. You got access to the whole town being with Michael. And I'm like, he's a good looking man and he's a good man. Provided for his family, doing his thing. What? Come on now. Now I have you got the protection of Sonny's organization behind you and Jason. Come on now, it don't get no better than that. Well, you pretty much if you're married to Mike Quarterman, you got the whole town behind you. You got all the assets of the town behind you when you marry Michael Quarterman, and he's he's a good looking man. What's up? It don't get no better than that. Well, actually, well, I wouldn't, but no, he's not the marrying type. But if I was to hook up with any guy on that show, that would be Mr. Brennan. I'm just saying, Mr. Brennan. Mr. Brennan yeah. decided to hook up with someone and then shoot them right afterwards. Be like, yep, sorry, I got to take, take you out. <laughs> it's like, exactly. damn, it's like that. <laughs> shoot him right afterwards. But, like, he's the type of, he's the rare type of man. Because usually I wouldn't like, I wouldn't like an older man like him. But, like, he's just that type that's just, like, so perfect. And then I could just visualize him. He probably wears that nice cologne. You can tell that. He, he probably smells so good and probably feels so good. Just, like, imagine with him all around you just... But, but but Brennan and Jerry Jacks, like I said, it's not the type of man. They'll, they'll, they'll hook up with you for the night, and then they'll shoot you right afterwards. Like, sorry, like, it's just business. But I had a good time. <laughs> Ooh, I, I'll take Morgan. Michael will bore me. Yeah, exactly. Michael and his St. Demonious ass would just bore me, though. He's I'd get tired of him attitude. I would have to knock him out after a while. At least Morgan, I could hit him over the head and get him some training, okay? <laughs> but Michael, he's just too insufferable. I do... Because of his name, he has a great name. Michael's a great name. That's the only reason I like Michael somewhat. Uh-huh. Michael's a good-looking man, y'all. Michael's a good-looking man. He's handsome. Right. He's he's a businessman. He's he's a family man. I don't know why people have this issue with Michael. Ever since Michael came on GH, I was like, dang, he look good. 
Nip, I go about nope. the same age. Susan, What's up? Susan, has What's up? A, Susan has a receipt for you. And then Susan says to DC, um, and all those assets won't get Michael a personality. I used to like Michael until he hired Dax. You damn right. Honestly, listen, I like Michael. And listen, if Willow can't hold it down, Michael, let me know. Give me a call. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm just saying. You could get some food poisoning from Carly's stale ass waffles from, from Bobby's, and then Michael can get you a room at GH from his grandma. Listen, I mean, if I was married to Michael, I would be making business moves. I'd have a stock in Corinthos Coffee, uh, be one of the board members at GH. Maybe I'd have, I'd be part owner of Bobby's. Listen, like, listen, and see, and that's the thing you got, Bobby. You, you, you got all these things going on as a result. You got all Michael is not ugly, ugly but town. Morgan looks better. Brian Craig was cute, but what makes Michael cuter is a business acumen and he's a family man. Morgan was too mature. Morgan was cute, but like in a F boy kind of way. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Michael is too much of a winner. Michael got that he stability. Y'all don't want stability? Nope. Not when it not not if his self-righteous ass is attached to it. Absolutely not. Well, Michael, Michael be holding it down for his family, though. He'd be holding it down for his family, his kids. And it's it's nothing sexier than that. Nothing sexier than that. And that's a good man. That's a good man right there. So, so he wanted it. to bring down his mobster father. Are we really mad at that, guys? He wanted to bring down a man, a, a man who kills people for a living. Or are we mad at that? You know what, Sonny? But I was surprised. But I was kind of surprised. I really thought that um, things set that up himself. But um, now Sonny really did have have Jagger jumped. So wow, he really is going reckless the way Carly predicted. But and now, all the more reason why Michael should bring him down. But they have a cop out finish. It's because he's off his medication. So now that's that's going to be his cop out out of that. But that's really. Yeah, I don't like how the writers are doing that because this is honestly all the stuff that Sonny's doing is typical behavior for a mobster. Like I don't. I feel like if he was acting out with his family or with his kids, then I could I can attribute this to him being off his meds. But like the stuff he's doing is what people who kill people for a living do. So like I need the writers to do a little better with this. Jessica says, LOL, true, Michael got coins. He admitted to having Jagger beat up. I was not paying attention. Yeah, um, him and Brick had Jagger jumped. What do you think about Brick and, and Jordan together? That ain't working because, um, first of all, Brick is not on the show enough to let that really settle. I mean, I get that, but my thing is, Jordan is a very good-looking woman. So how all this time she's not going to have a man? I'm just saying. I mean, they're a good-looking couple. She's a good-looking woman. Brick is a, a very handsome man. Hey, listen. Brick is all right. He all right. The only problem is I feel like with Stephen A. Smith, I feel like, you know, in real life, we'd be the type of person like he would never stop talking. <laughs> He's a good-looking man, though. Your Sonny raised Michael's weak ass. Maybe he should remember who raised him. Make no excuse. I'm no Sonny fan either, but to plot against your father figure is inexcusable. But he's trying to bring down a man who kills people for a living, guys. That's not the reason why he was trying to bring him down. So, like, people have all this smoke for Nina for snitching on Carly. So, but yet they gave um, Michael a pass because they're that mad at Nina. Those same I mean, people. I mean, Nina was trying to uphold the law, but Nina also understands she was a mobster. You don't you don't call the cops when you date a mobster. See, that's, that's the thing about Sonny. Just like, son of the mobster. So, you don't, you don't snitch. Sonny always dates these high maintenance women who don't seem to know how the mob world works, except for Carly. And that's why Carly is always still numero uno because she gets how the world works. Because Brenda didn't get it, Kate Howard didn't get it, Connie Falconeri didn't get it, even though her and Kate Howard is the same person. Alexis didn't get it, <laughs> Nina didn't get it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But guess what? But Carly never got it now because guess what? Ava gets it. Ava is the mob. Doesn't just get it. She is the mob. And she's she's like the exception because usually the women who do get it, Sonny doesn't want to romance with them. But it's like the first time he kind of does want to romance because he never really wanted Carly. He, Carly was never love his life. It's always gonna be Brenda Barrett. You can't tell me nothing else, guys. It will always be Brenda forever, forever it will be Brenda. And he's looking for Brenda and every other woman he's been in since. Let's be honest, y'all don't see the pattern. He's looking for Brenda. That's what he wants. Yeah, Brenda, tell me y'all don't see that. That's the love of his life. He's looking for Brenda and every other woman since because Brenda was a good woman. The Quartermains loved her. She was revered. She had a good reputation, and she tried to bring Sonny down. She was a classy chick. And ever since then, Sonny has always gone for the classy chick. That's always one of them. Alexis, Kate Howard, uh, Nina, um, uh, Claire Walsh. That's what Sonny, Sonny wants from a classy chick. 
And then last day is asking, what about Sonny's first wife, Lily? Did did she get it? Get what exactly? You mean saying uh, being a mob wife? Probably not as much to get blown up. <laughs> probably not as much. Um, we, we, it was probably too soon to tell with Lily, but with, with Sonny, he he wants classy. And to be honest, men like that are usually want women who are classy because one they are going to be more likely more submissive to them and they're more of a dominant figure they don't want another dominant figure with them so a mob certain mafiosa that's not what's gonna work ava is no longer in the mob anymore so it's why she's a more she docile she could work with me now but she could but she still understands the mob so she could easily she does. easily step in and out of that that thing exactly. so carly can't just say oh well no you don't understand what it's like to be with sunny ava's like well shit, i was sunny's rival all these years so like i was actually in the business with him against him at that same time i know uh, like so you can't tell me you can't tell me nothing that i don't know how even when you when you were trying to play mobster for five seconds I, I i tried to step in and help you and play the decoy for um gladys so don't don't speak to me like that carly so that's how Ava really stepped to her. Like once, once she had Sunny's real backing, which she already did. You saw how Sunny was like, um, "Don't don't talk to her that way." And Carly was shook too. She was like, "Oh no, he he's defending this bitch like that." But she didn't even she couldn't even say much. She talked about, "No, Ava's not going anywhere." And yep, we're gonna have this conversation in front of her. And don't talk to her that way. I was like, oh, "Okay, right. talk about what a." What, <laughs> But talk about what a role's reverse, because I recall in 2016 when Ava simply just told Carly to her face that, um, well, no, Sunny, she said, oh, yeah, um, you didn't tell Carly about our arrangement for Avery? Not that you had to, of course, giving Avery is our daughter, and we certainly don't need any of Carly's input. And Sunny said, Ava, if you ever talk to Carly like that again, I'm going to make sure you never see Avery again. So, um... Now we reverse into that to 2024. Now the whole other the positions have finally reversed in eight years. Who would have ever thought? Mm -hmm. Now Carly and that's, that's the part that Carly didn't expect. That's what Carly didn't expect. Mm -hmm. But now her and Jason are be together. Hashtag Jarly. I'm ready for Jarly now. It's time. Listen, guys, I'm saying time again. It is time for Jason and Carly to be together. It's time for them to be united. We have way 20. And I don't even like Jason Carly that much. If this is Jason, I don't like him. He's a, he's a man who kills me for a living. But it's time for them be together. It's time. It's time. We have waited for so long, guys. It's time. That's the only one he really loves. He doesn't even care about his own kids. Okay, so it's just time to bring these two together. You sure <laughs> don't give a damn about his kids, and we could get good storylines if they put Sunny and Ava Ava together for a while. Well, yeah, we can get some juicy drama out of them being a couple, though. I mean, for one, the betrayal that Nina's gonna feel that her friend is sleeping with her her husband. Or, well, they're not even fully divorced yet, right? So her husband. Yeah, but then again, Nina has no more high ground with me. She slept with Drew. So, sweetheart, um, you're not necessarily the devoted wife on the corner anymore. So, all her desperation for Sonny. Oh, no, I really just want to get Sonny back. I don't want any other man but Sonny. Uh, that's not particularly true. You threw your clothes off with Drew. So, uh, but Nina doesn't have anybody on canvas right now. That's the problem. Like, she doesn't have, like... Nina doesn't really have anybody right now, Cam. Over doesn't count. Over is like in the background. We'll see her once every eight years at this point. Looks like the only Nina one that loves Nina Obama. is Maxie. That's it. And Maxie has barely been around Nina, honestly. They barely had scenes. Maxie like, and Sasha are the only ones that vibe with Nina. That's it. Maxie and Sasha. It's like who, who it's like who does she have in her corner at this point? You know what I mean? Like I'm looking at Nina and it's like because the character of Nina is very written very poorly right now. I feel like she doesn't have anybody and she needs somebody for crying out loud for her to make sense on the canvas. Well, and Sasha, Sasha's, Sasha's busy with um what's his name again? Leroy. Cody. Cody. That's not me saying Leroy. <laughs> <laughs> Leroy Brown. Cody's a good looking man, too. He's a good looking man. Cody's another I mean, one. Cody's a solid seven. I would give Cody a seven. I give him a nine. Cody's a nine. A nine. <laughs> and all about this is the same thing, not Leroy. Leroy S. Brown. <laughs> Leroy Brown. <laughs> Sounds like a kid from the from the hood <laughs> that stays on the stoop talking to all the neighbors. But um 
Sasha is another character that's losing ground for me. I'm like, what is her purpose on the show? And her and Cody are okay. GH is trying to infuse classic GH, but they have to remember the audience that's been here for the past almost 20 years has been mobster about Guza GH. And so mm -hmm. these storylines, I don't know how they're going to work for this audience. Because this is the thing, like, you know, we're talking about soaps, like, soaps need to bring in new audiences, right? And you might think of the gates coming. I'm happy for it. But, like, people aren't watching soaps. And I don't know if soaps know how to bring in new viewers. They're all about keeping the viewers that they got. And that's cool. But how do you bring in new people? You've got to bring in, like, compelling storylines. And they haven't been able to do that for a minute. You know what I mean? So I'm, I'm kind of curious to see how they're going to do that. And so when I think of the storylines with Sasha and um, I almost said Leroy again, Sasha and Cody, um, our Brooklyn and Chase, I don't know if these storylines are really pulling in people because I'm I'm bored with both of those couples, especially, especially Brooklyn and Chase. So boring. And I'm just hoping that the Rise of the H can remember, like, who these who the current who the current GH fans are, but also how to bring in new people as well. Go ahead, sorry about that. DJ Club 18 says, Oh Lord, Sasha and Cody are boring. And then Dewan says, Cody looked good shirtless. Well, he really did. He really did look good shirtless. He really did. Him I still rate him a seven out of ten. Michael, Michael don't look Cody a nice eight. Michael's a 9.5 for me. Michael looks good in 2014, but not now, okay? <laughs> so, um, yeah. Michael still is good. The first day he came on the cell, like, who is this man that they're buying? And, and, and you know, Jason looks good too. I'm going to give Jason. Jason looks good. But Jason looks like the type of person he ain't going to talk to you. Bit. He's not going to give you no pillow talk. You just got to go to bed afterwards. <laughs> okay, I'm going to keep this PG. We're at the PG. I'm going to keep this PG. Jason is okay, also a PG. This is, this is PG. Okay, I can agree with that. I can agree with that. Jason, Cody, they're both seven. Sonny back in the day used to be a good little eight point. Sonny's yeah, now a seven. Cody Rhodes. Oh, Cody Rhodes is a Shane nine for me. Cody Rhodes. Cody Rhodes is a nine for me. That's a nine. Cody Rhodes is a nine for me. I watch a little bit of WWE. I, I know a little about WWE here and there. AD. I don't look at her. Wrestling. Cody Rhodes is a champion on WWE. The same now as an adult. <laughs> All right. Did I just go out for a second? Um, yeah. For a second, you were. Okay, am I back on? You were. Okay. okay I think okay. so. Yeah. Not, yeah, exactly. not back. But okay, yeah. I'm back. Okay. But now you have Cody Rhodes is the champion now. So yeah. <laughs> and then I love how Jessica said Sonny's like a four now, not a four. All right. He was so um, handsome. Had... Listen, Maurice Brown was so handsome as all my children. He was so handsome, but now I was like, all right, I got you. All right. Yeah, he's a he's around a seven. And Betty is a six. Yeah, Mac. Ooh, Mac can get it. Mac can get it. Mac Scorpio. Mm -hmm. Ooh, wait. Mac a, is Mac an Mac eight. Scorpio, though. Mac an eight. Mac Scorpio, though. Let me tell you, though. Mac Scorpio, though. What's up, though? What you want to do, though? You got a band, though? <laughs> <laughs> But oh the young and the restless, I think they, they finally took my Aunt Jordan just a little bit too far this time. All right. Um, it was really messed up watching what she said when she she said to Harrison, because Harrison's like, yo, I want my mom and dad. And then um, Jordan told him, your mom and dad don't want you anymore. I'm now your Aunt Jordan. You're going to stay with me. He, she said that to that little boy. Was she kidnapped Harrison? Yep, she kidnapped Harrison and Claire, and she she dead. I said they didn't just show that off screen; they actually showed her on screen saying it to Harrison that his mother and his and his father does not want him anymore, and that now she's his aunt Jordan. Because he said he said um I don't he said I don't know you I want I want I want my dad, like he doesn't want he don't want he doesn't want you anymore. I'm like yeah, this lady got to go. Damn. Yeah. I liked Jordan when she was coming after yeah. Nikki. Like I said, I really enjoyed when she was shoving that um that alcohol up up Nikki's arm because I'm sick of Nikki and her stuck up snobby self. And I don't care. Jordan could give her so much liquor until Nikki's liver falls out. All I care, but you don't come after a child. That's just um, 
that's just what you don't do. So I can't support. Yeah, kidnapping children was like an all my children kind of thing. So that all my children, there was always someone, oh, some child, someone's child getting kidnapped or going missing, or, or someone finding out they had a long lost child by like a by a like a, a shot vial or something like that. It's not using one of the style, but wow, I didn't know that because mm-hmm. I hadn't I hadn't kind seen of- Line R yet today. I only saw yeah, GH before. It was- I love it. Yeah, yeah. Now my yeah now my channel is a little different. I want I, I I stay up on all the soaps up in here. We make sure I make sure all the soaps get some good love up in here. In terms of what's okay. going on this week in soaps, what happened to me. Why? 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 Am I still here? You are still right, am I, here. Am I working now? Okay. Sorry oh, about yeah. that, guys. Why am I here? It's terrible. God damn. Jesus oh, Christ. Wow. But I made you, right. I made sure I watched all. I actually made sure I watched all four soap operas today. Oh. I had some case studies to do for class. I was behind, but I was watching GA during the time. The time I could, I probably could have ended up seeing all four today, but I didn't get, I didn't get the chance to. Kyrie's honest. That's just Kyrie's honest with me personally. Do you have alcoholism? There's many in my family. Yeah, my, my yeah, I do have an alcoholic in my in my family too, but. Um, I still have no compassion for Nikki because why is that? Why should I? They have they give me no reason to root for Nikki Newman. Like I feel like I kind of agree with you. I'm not gonna I kinda agree with you. <laughs> like because my thing is I know that none of these Newmans, like no matter what she did to the Newmans before, none of that would be any long lasting damage. It's Victor Newman. Like the man is indestructible. If all the crap he's done over the years haven't caught up to him now, and he's like 155 years old, what makes you think anything Aunt Jordan does to him is really gonna stick? Okay, he he is not gonna change. Victoria is not gonna change. Nikki's not gonna change. So why should I waste my time having any sort of compassion for Nikki Newman when I know nothing to do? Like I said, now give me something that she really can't. Recover on like if she has to truly stay on dialysis for the rest of her life, like because of Jordan ruining her thing or something like that, that would really make me root for Nikki and forget why I hate this woman, and then like really make me feel something that 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 it doesn't matter what Victor Victor's money can't throw at it. Um, there's something, but like it's this just not gonna work like that with the Newman. So that's why I didn't care all the things that Jordan was doing. I knew that Jordan. Like I was trolling to a point when I'm like, oh yeah, Jordan, my aunt Jordan is a good woman deep down. Okay, I I always knew she was evil, but watching her, her what she's doing to Harrison, that's this is gonna affect Harrison for the rest of his life. He's gonna remember that being kidnapped, yeah, and, but seeing a child, an innocent child, that she's trying to ruin his innocence, telling him his parent, his parents don't want him like that. It's just drawing the line. That's why I draw the line. So, like, but as much as I did the same thing with Claire, though. Yeah, she did do that. But you see, she did that with Claire. But I still don't particularly believe Claire like that. I'm not really invested in Claire like that with the characters. I don't really believe Claire. I still believe Claire could be a part of some sort of long con. So I didn't really feel that emotion with that. But now, um, seeing her doing that to Harrison, that is where she really crossed the line. Like we could actually see it. Well, first of all, and props to that little actor playing Harrison. He's a very good actor, but um, little actor. But um, so and someone was right. Someone was right to not have Claire in their lives though, because Claire is dangerous. And Kyle was like, "Well, you know, we all make mistakes." And you know, Kyle was just saying that because Claire was cute. And you know, people will exactly. overlook a lot when they find you attractive. They will overlook a lot. They will overlook a lot of things that they find you attractive. But see, someone was not into Claire, so therefore <laughs> she was able to see things clearly. <laughs> exactly. But, but this is generally not Claire's fault for as of now. Um, but because we saw Jordan chloroform Claire. So this is all on Aunt Jordan, but she finally crossed the line though when traumatizing a child, and we know that that's not a part of no con or nothing, that she really is doing that to Harrison. That's just where. Uh-uh. I feel, jo- and besides, Jordan has been getting cartoonish for a minute, though. Like, she keeps yeah. escaping every 10 seconds. She, it's I felt like if she was going to hide out for a little while after she tried to kill all the Newmans and then made another move months later, then 
that could have been fine. Or like when she got arrested, they should have just left her in jail for a little bit. And then if she came back in like th at least three to six months, but like, no, it was like a few weeks and then she's out. Victor finally set a trap for her. And there was no reason why Victor wouldn't have killed her right then and there. We all know Victor is very capable of murder. So um, she should have probably been gone that then, or at very least he could have tried to kill her and then she she managed to escape a different way. And then, but no, Nikki, Nikki did that and Nikki and Claire and them called 911 to save her. And now she escaped again. She escaped the hospital, all these security guards. Like it's so cartoonish at this point with no real effort. She has no outside help, no, no money, no connections. She's just, she's doing too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. I agree. It's kind of a little cartoonish at this point with Jordan, um, and I, I would have to kind of see how they what they take her in um, because even with Sheila on B and B, I can't take that storyline seriously anymore, and I don't like it when soaps do storylines in a way where I can't take it seriously. That's one thing GH doesn't really do. GH doesn't do like cartoonish stuff. They have Heather Weber on, mm -hmm. which just Heather Weber is okay. My Heather Weber still Robin Matson. I still believe mm -hmm. she's a real Heather Weber, but this one we'll do for now. Um, GH doesn't let things get cartoonish because and then and let us stop taking things seriously. Now, YNR is not doing that with Jordan, BB is doing that with Sheila. Days has definitely been a little cartoonish here and there were certain things, which I'm like, okay, let's let's not do this because this is not the way to bring the movie. Up. Sorry about to be about to be spoiled again on days of our lives, but Stefan is already out of jail. Okay, okay, okay. I figured, he got, I figured. he got time served, so he didn't even have to. He got the, the 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 two seconds he spent in jail, it, the the judge granted it as time served, and we didn't even get to see the court scenes. So, literally, hmm. he was in jail for two seconds. I think my problem with days is I don't get how Clyde Weston has this much power over the Demeras, over the Kiriakuses. It just doesn't make sense. He's just one man. Like this man, he had to have Ava go to the restaurant, go to stuff. So he's clearly not that powerful. So, like, what is going on here? You know, it just doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. It says Gemini says GH may may forget about a story, but definitely not cartoonish. Yeah, facts, facts, definitely facts. B and B is a joke of a show, cause like, cause, but yeah, but back to that GH, cause it's true. Cause as much as I'm angry about what they did to Esme, um, but think about it. But they they wrote that realistically. Now Esme is off campus. If that was bald and beautiful, oh please, Esme would be back and popping. If, um, yeah, she'll be popping up in the castle from time to time. It's just, honestly, I liked it when they redeemed Esme. I appreciate that. And I liked when Esme got her, her memory back. Because my thing is when she got her memory back, mm -hmm. I personally feel like with Esme, where she think with, like, Cam and Jocelyn was wrong? But I also just kind of felt like, you know, I'm going to stay quiet on that. No, 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 go ahead. This is my shrimp. We ain't got we we ain't worried about that. We ain't got no sensitive feelings. I don't feel like that made her irredeemable as a character to me personally. It didn't. When, it, it didn't. I, I feel like everyone's like, oh my god, what you that there? All right, now this is why I'm gonna get I, I'll take I'll take the heat. Cause this is this is some ignorant stuff that if Spider Quake said it were well, whatever, but I don't care. I will say it. The only reason people were that mad about what she did to Trina was because Trina was black. Let's just be real. If Esme did that to Jocelyn instead, then um, cause who gives a fuck about that damn sex tape all that much? But like now, but her drugging Trina, that is what everybody is really all heated about and why they're extra, they're extra um thing because if if she just drugged Jocelyn instead of Trina had nothing to do with this she she didn't do anything else how to did Trina, Trina go that far in the trial like the victims are basically saying she didn't do it so how did Trina go all the way that far in the trial honestly yeah finally like, yeah everyone's finally. vouching you didn't do it the whole community saying you like I said it I said it, it on your her, behalf like, okay because honestly, I don't think Esme, what Esme did was really that bad at all. I mean, she loved Spencer. She wanted life with him. And even when she was raising baby Ace, people were like, oh, like, you know, if you remember what you did. Even she did remember what she did. Like, she's, she's looking out for her child. Like, I don't see what's so wrong with that. And it's like, 
I still believe Spencer is Ace's father. But yeah, he wasn't man enough to get that girl pregnant. Okay. His daddy had to do it because Spencer wasn't man enough. His swimmers wasn't swimming at the right time. So therefore, daddy they go, re- they go always rewrite history, go back and say he was. But but then the thing is, when they do history rights, when I'm trying to pass it, they can make it forget. But when you think about it, though, when we saw Esme, she was big and pregnant when she really shouldn't have been that far along. So it wouldn't be that plausible if she was, was sleeping with, because remember when. Herman Spencer did have that pregnancy scare a mm-hmm. while back. So she could have just been lying then when she said, Oh no, oh um, it was a negative, it was a negative test result. And then she was already pregnant while well, between that, because when she came back, she was big and pregnant. When she should have only been a few months along in between that. But you know how they rush, they rush pregnancies because Christina's already six months pregnant. So that's true. They're trying, they're trying to tell the story. They're trying, you know, they're trying to rush the story along, which, you know, that's the thing. Like, I I, I kind of wonder, like I said, with this new soap coming in January, um, I always, I'm just kind of wondering how this is going to be done because five days a week, people, do people have the patience for that, new soap viewers? You know, because here's the thing, like, you know, I remember watching GH a few weeks ago and I was watching with my boyfriend, we watching GH and he was bored. He's like, oh, I'll watch your soaps with you. And I was like, okay, cool. And he was bored. And you know what? I don't blame him. The episode was boring. The episode was boring. And this is why I'm saying why you can't they can't get new viewers. Because back in the day, I remember I used to watch One Like to Live and I put my friends onto it. We were in middle school and I was like, you should watch a show called One Like to Live. And I remember Tina was going off in the falls and they had all these storylines and, and her and her sister was like, oh my God, we, we, we were so enthralled by the show. We can't wait to watch it the next day. And I got a new viewer for a soap. That's what I did back then. I did my duty as a soap viewer. But today I can't do it because y'all not writing the way y'all are supposed to be writing. The way y'all write, y'all not writing the way you're supposed to be writing. So my boy was watching One Like to Live. He was like, he's like, oh, he's like, oh, okay. I was like, what do you think? He's like, oh, it's okay. It's okay, show. It was boring. Even I was watching, like, this is boring. Like, Every scene, I'm not saying every scene should be fireworks and a big reveal, but you should be writing impeccable writing in the scenes. You should be writing impeccable writing. <laughs> like, Oop, he's got himself a new bed. Like, you should write impeccable <laughs> writing in these scenes. Y'all not doing that. Y'all not doing that today. That's why you can't bring in new people. Now, my mom, she'll come in sometimes. She'll see me watching GH. She's like, oh, is that, is that, is that, uh, is that, um, Mrs. Quartermain when she sees, um, Lucy? Because Lucy was married to Alan back in time when she watched GH, it was in the 80s. So she'll, she'll probably make a little comment, but new viewers, y'all, y'all, y'all can't do it. Because remember, GH was a soap to bring in male viewers. It mm. was that soap that did that job. But now y'all ain't bringing in no viewers. <laughs> Hello, uh, um, the Queen Jessica and Gemini and them, the, these nosy people got a question for you. They said, it was it your current boyfriend or your ex-boyfriend? It's current, current boyfriend, current boyfriend, current. All right. <laughs> my ex-boyfriend was like what? From like over a year and a half ago, let me put my business out of this. <laughs> this is the numbers live, right? This is the numbers only, right? Or is there, the general public? This is the public. Hello, <laughs> general public. It's okay. He doesn't watch those, so he's, he's gonna be okay. He don't watch those. <laughs> oh, this an old period. I don't know. Oh gosh, oh god. But that's what I'm saying. You like they're not bringing new viewers, and so I hope the gates is written away. Also, I hope the gates. Still has that traditional soap look I'm hoping for, so we'll see. Go ahead. Yeah, I feel like the gates, on the other hand, they need to have um, more realistic storylines for 2024. Like, begin with the times and do modern storylines. Let's not... Let's not go back to the 1980s, back from the dead, this, that. Like, yeah. Like, no, we need, like, fresh, 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 fresh stuff. Like, give us... Things that, but give us stuff that we could escape from. Let's not make it like too, like too much of the real life drama. But like you know, like but give us like some good fantasy that's not too cartoonish. Like come on, if they if they hire creative writers, they could do it. They could just find a way to surprise us. Like be like, oh, I cannot wait until I get back home from work. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna watch the gates the second I get home from work. I can't wait to see that. I cannot wait. Oh, I cannot wait until my 30 minute break. Like no, you need to schedule my lunch until later because at th- at two o'clock the late the the gates is coming on. I need to I need to watch the gates live. Like you need to make us feel that. Like. Feel that can, I, can I tell you, I think the one soap that had the, the best balance between realistic and still giving us that soapiness was One Life to Live. And the reason why I said because the whole premise of that show was diversity, right? But One Life to Live, 
is that it gave us realistic storylines. Like we we saw it with the one poor people thing with the racist arsonist, but it was we were getting a social issue storyline, but a soapness at the same time. One Life to Live did it perfectly. It did it, it did it perfectly out of all the soaps. Now all my children, all my children gave you the character development. So you really got to really be in tune with the characters. And some of the characters, some of the storylines were ridiculous on my children, but the character development, the little somber music they would have in the background, it would make you, it would make you kind of like in your tears, like, oh my God, I can't believe you did that. Oh my God, you felt it, right? But a lot of these shows now, it's like, what the hell are we watching? Like, I can see why people don't want to watch this crap. Like when I watched One Life to Live back in the day, it I was able to put my, friends on so we were watching it they were into those storylines they were into like who was a racist arsonist who was going after nor because she was jewish evangelist because they were black and the vega brothers because they were hispanic like but then we still got the soapiness of it all it's like it was like an arsonist and that was good stuff they, exactly susan russo has wanted to tell very current stories and a lot of these soaps nowadays they don't know how to do it because the the lot the, these four soaps that are on the air right now they never had that rhythm of doing that kind of balance and it's sad that the soaps that did are not there anymore because gh was all about telling the mob stuff and now I don't know, the writers trying to go a different direction. Maybe people got tired of it. YNR was always like a slower storyline. It was for an older audience, but the older audience, uh, most of them are six feet under now. So we got to tell some new stories. <laughs> and B and B, <laughs> B and B, it's just B and B, the audience that was so into Ridge and Brooke, they're six feet under too. They're about to stay here no more. So y'all got to do something different now. They sure do. Oh gosh. So I'm hoping I'm hoping that's what we'll get with the gates is like you said, a realistic storyline. So you can still give a soap, but something that brings in new people. And another thing is if they have to bring in the right, they have to bring in some old familiar faces from soaps and also some familiar faces out there on just pop culture to bring new people in. Like mm -hmm. bringing Jack and Harrison on days was genius because she has a sister sister audience that she can bring with her. We need that. Like one like to live did that. They had Snoop Dogg on at one point in time. They had one Republic. They had they had they had a uh, what was it? What's her name? Uh Courtney Kardashian was on One Like to Live and she played a detective. People don't even know this, right? Ron Carvalotti knew what he's doing. That's why I feel like Days has a chance to still prosper. They still have a chance to still prosper and make it out here. So and that's my little spiel. That is that is true though, but like I feel like with the gates, it's very important that they make sure that they don't forget anytime soon. For the next at least five to ten years, you gotta really write with urgency. That's what they really need to do. Like they need to write like every day, like it's your last day. Like you gotta be like, oh no, 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 no. We cannot put no crap out here. Oh no, 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 F that. This let me let me let me proof, let me proofread this shit. Oh no, 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 no. This 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 script is some garbage ass shit. We can't put this out there. You gotta write like every single day, like it's your last day. That's how they that's how they need to do that. I agree. Um, Cause you know the thing is that's the thing that happened a lot of soaps is that it wasn't until they got canceled. They put out their best material, like Loving, when it got canceled in the 90s. They came out with the serial killer mystery where the lady killed her own son. It was like, what? And it's like, that was their best storyline, but it was too late. One Life to Live came out with their best stuff. Why wow, they got canceled. All My Children, I don't think they count their best stuff. Well, it was okay. I, I can't say they count their best stuff, but most subs did because now it's like, we don't need, we don't have no threat of cancellation anymore. So let's just do it, you know? But it's like, that's, you're right. That's the way they should write, as if this is our last. Because that's when you'll bring the best material. And these soaps, they don't have no competition. They're, like, why aren't artists nobody competing against them? So, like, eh, that's right, whatever. Like, we're, we're all going to get paid anyways, guys. So, like, you know, like Nick Newman just shows up for the check. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Shows, exactly. What is, what is Nick Newman? He's just there for the check. What is he even doing? You know? So, I agree with you. Totally agree with you. That's just, that's what they got to do. They got to get, they got to keep it current. We got to, we need some strong acting from this show. And I agree. I agree. I hope I hope they can do that with the gates. I really hope that they can give us that realistic writing. Um, give us like days would do great if they would just lay off the cartoonishness a little bit. They, they do. They're doing OK. Um, no soap will ever be all my children. But this is a Procter and Gamble soap. So my. I have high hopes because I remember how as well turns written, how guideline was written, how another world was written. So I was like, I think this can be done right. That like Procter and Gamble's behind it because their soaps were written a certain type of way. So, but y'all love y'all love to talk about what night to live. But I remember like one time when I was like nine, and my mom and my mom was watching that. I was like, 
you know, I remember always being so bored when, when One Life to Live was on. And my mother's like, what? You don't like One Life to Live? I said, I said I could tolerate General Hospital, but I don't like One Life. It's better than One Life to Live. I just found that the episode that they had on was so boring. What's, what episode was it? I don't remember, but I just what, know what year, was was it? what year was this? What year was this? 2009. That was one of the, that was one of the best years. Uh-uh, not to me, it wasn't. I just you might have caught them on the wrong. You just might have caught them at a bad time. It happens, and it does happen. But when I had to live, I, I feel like that was a one soap. Like I feel like I was growing with the soap. Even on my channel, I was growing with these soaps. I, these other soaps, I feel like I'm really growing with with the soap. But I was growing with all my children. I was growing with one life to live. Man, one life to live was just the storylines made you feel like you really were connected as a citizen of the land view, and. That's why people are always complain about diversity on, on on General Hospital. I don't pay them no mind because I'm like, this is what y'all signed up for. Y'all signed up for gunshots and mob store lines. They don't do diversity on GH. And that's what you get. And if you had a, if you really want to get diversity, you should have been watching Like to Live. And then maybe it wouldn't have gotten canceled, like Albert. <laughs> <laughs> you still hold Albert solely responsible for getting one night to live canceled. Right? Then he'd been watching it wouldn't have gotten canceled. We could have used that view. <laughs> So just so just Albert alone has that much pull. He, he, used to watch, he only watched the last 15 minutes just to be on time for GH. That's really what it was. I have an issue with that. <laughs> Back in the day, soap, you would get you would get smacked, and now they say careful to say now they careful to say the word bitch. That's true. They are careful to say that. That's the only time when Nina, when Nina screamed at Carly and said, you don't t don't tell me what to do, you selfish bitch. After she found out about Willow, that was all we had. All that months long storyline, and that was our payoff. Nina yelled at her and called her a monster and a selfish bitch. That was it. Like no scratching, no hair pulling, no punching, no none of that. No no low blows, nothing. Just just that. And then Carly said, Carly just sit, stood there with a dumb look on her face. I'm like, really? That's it. Mm, and then I, the SEC nonsense came out. What did we get? Nothing. Carly just said, I can't, I can't handle this right now. My mom just died. Why do I have to live in a world where my mom is dead but Nina gets to live? That was it. So, and she so. took over Crimson. And Nina has Crimson back already. So the thing is with GH is that they're all about moving the plot along, but there's no development really in the characters. And, and but they're trying to work on that now, and I appreciate that. Like I said, all my children, when no, no, I'm, I'm, I don't bring up past soaps, but I, I, I got to all my children when they had Greg Madden in the coffin, he was buried alive, and then Josh said to Babe, "My dad died. They killed him. Put me in the coffin too. I want to know what it felt like." And then she put him in the coffin. And he goes, "Let me out. I can't breathe." He's like, "Why would they do that?" Even though he was a bad man, he didn't deserve to die like that. And it's like that moment you felt for him. We know his dad wasn't shit. But it's like you still felt for him, like, yeah, he lost his dad. Even though his dad was a kidnapper and his dad wasn't shit. But still you felt for him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and see, it was those moments on soaps that I missed where like you started to feel for people. You really felt for them. Like even, even the, the scenes on, on, on One Life to Live, um, the storylines where it's like, when you knew the character was not wasn't that wasn't wasn't shizzle, but you still felt for them though, because the way the writing made you feel for that person, you know, it made you feel like damn, like what they did was messed up. But oh, that's gotta be a tough situation to be in. Where now that that development is not all the way there, but GH is trying. They're trying to give us that, and I actually do appreciate that a little bit. I appreciate like B and B has actually been giving me a little bit more, a little bit of that character development lately. Like even with Hope, when Hope was going through stuff with Thomas and. You know, granted, I didn't like that she was stringing him along, but then I also kind of felt for her too. I was like, damn, like she's going through it. when she was crying. She's, like, <laughs> she's crying at the Forrester, the Forrester, it's a Forrester uh, makeup route. I can't believe it. But, but Tom was like, how come we're, are we not good enough for you? I was like, damn. Yeah, Douglas said that. Wow, wow. I felt when, yeah, when Douglas says, like, well, we're not good enough for you. And you know what? It's like, Hope was like, damn, you know, but she's not ready. And I, good, I, I, I understood Hope's dilemma. She had just gotten out of a divorce. But you know, people on BNB, they didn't pay shit. Like, you have to get married after two months. That's usually the policy on there, right? You know? Because like, that's the thing about Bald and the Beautiful. Like, I hate how they don't understand that dating is a real thing. 
that you can explore. Need time. Like, need some time. Yeah. Get from a thousand, from a hundred to a thousand. Like even like RJ and Luna being so in love, I found that to be ridiculous too. Like you just met the boy, and two weeks, literally two weeks later, she said, "Oh, I love, I love him." I love you. Yeah, I love you. Like you don't even know his last, his middle name. So like, come on. They the really could have gonna take time and dating. <laughs> yeah. They didn't even get to know each other. But speaking of bald and beautiful, that really was on um, my thought too. What do you think about Steffi Forrester? Like, I mean, she's been like a real bitch lately. She's Steffi. become like her grandmother, like her namesake, Steffi Forrester. When she came in and she said to to, to Hope, she's like, oh, yeah, you Logans, you know, you need to apologize. For her. It was given classic Steffi Forrester. It's like she was challenging the spirit of her grandmother. And I was like, sis, you need to calm down. Like, because here's the thing. Hope to forgive Thomas. Do I feel like she was kind of taken for a ride? Possibly. But I also feel like it's good that Thomas did it in reverse because, honestly, like I said, and I'll say this before, when you're in a relationship with someone or you, you're you pining after someone, the way you make them attractive is giving space or by moving on doing your business. I'm happy that Thomas says, you know, I'm going to move on. And hopefully when he comes back from Paris, he has a new woman in his arm. And Hope is going to be thinking, oh, snap, like he could replace me? Oh, um, hey, Thomas, how you doing? Hey. He needs to do that. He, 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 Stephanie, doesn't, Stephanie, doesn't, Stephanie doesn't understand that this is good for her brother's growth. He needs to experience that because he's too much up host bunda. He needs to give her a break. Give her bunda a break. You know what I'm saying? You can't be up someone's wazoo all the time. Give them a break. Make them miss you a little bit. Make them make them desire you some more. And it's not about playing games, but people need to be able to desire. You know that they can lose you. If you know someone feel they can't lose you, they will, they will abuse you. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's what you got to do so Steffi in a sense she's very overprotective of Thomas but she also really hates Hope she does and for understandable reasons but honestly she should be glad because Hope was given Hope, if Hope is in Thomas's orbit she's not in Finn's orbit <laughs> <laughs> you know those Logans they have no problem going after married men so exactly yeah. exactly so she, she should be grateful and honestly what other woman in LA is gonna want Thomas based on his reputation? Hope is giving him a chance. That's what he wants. Give us some time. And Thomas could have just been patient. I, I get he didn't want the rejection, but maybe he should have had a conversation with Hope first and said, "Hey, how would you feel if we got if we got married, if we engaged?" So that way you didn't have to go through the rejection. Because I'm not gonna lie, if I propose to someone, they said no, I'm not proposing again. You want exactly. <laughs> totally don't blame him on that. What were your thoughts? I I'm not I'm not proposing I'm not proposing twice either. But I felt like Thomas needed to finally step out of Hope's shadow though. Like he needed to finally remember that he's a man. That like for, for the last several years he's just been spending his time saying, you know, hope is the greatest thing since sliced bread. Hope is so great. Hope is so full of compassion. Hope is this. Hope is that. That's literally all he's ever talked about for so many years. So finally, for once. He's like a man again. He finally said, like, you know what? I got a son. I got I, I'm I'm a good looking man. I can get I can get I can, I can get me another woman. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't need to be sitting over there. You don't want to commit yourself to me, then forget then forget it. Like, and then Liam gets on my damn nerves because he always loves to throw up um Thomas with the bet with the Beth thing, but he conveniently forgets that. Without without Thomas, Liam and his daddy would have still been sitting up in that prison. Liam always forgets that. So how about every day with his life without Beth, without Beth? But you wouldn't be seeing Beth right now, anyways. You would still be in jail when you hit Vin Vinny with that car. You would still be in jail. You and your daddy, because um, they wanted to give Bill and Liam the maximum sentence too. And technically, didn't Wayne Brady steal Beth? Wayne Brady was the one who stole Beth. Yeah, Wayne Brady was the one that. Um, that stole Beth. So, Luna, stole Beth, you know, know. Morpheus says says um, Luna was in love after three days. I love it. It's true. That was that was ridiculous. If you if you reject me, see see you see you have a nice life. Exactly. But I'm like I'm glad that as much as I don't like Thomas for what he did to my girl, I'm a barber who. Um, that's right, Darby. Emma Barber was a good character, and Thomas sat there and watched her die with a smile on his face. I'm never going to forgive Thomas for that. So, yep, I hope that Darby heard that because I meant it. Don't think just because I, I had DC here that I was going to forget Thomas is crying. No. He broke my heart that night watching Emma die with a smile on his face. 
Do you remember that story? Do you remember what that was I remember like? it very briefly, very briefly. And I, when they brought Xander back, I thought they were going to bring him back for good. And he was looking good that day. He got a new, he got a nice little cut. I was like, okay, Xander, what's up, though? No, I see you, though, my boy. I see you, though. You know, but Xander was on. Like, so they're gonna bring Xander back. He was just on for. He was just on for one week, and then he was gone again. I'm like, well, that was short lived. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's the reason Finn now. He was on for Black History Month. <laughs> Better thanks for Emma. That's right. Um, Emma was a good woman. Well, she was boring, okay, for the most part. But however, the way she went out, she went out, they made her interesting on her last day of life. So I felt like if they could make her interesting in one last day of life, they could bring her back and be make her the rootable, strong character that she could have been, I felt. See, I would like, if Emma does come back, and obviously you can bring Justin back as a result, I would like them to be on B&B for a little bit and then just have the writers mm -hmm. transfer them over to YNR like they did with Sally. Because yes. bring them over with the Barber, Hastings, Hamilton, Winners, Johnson. And she's McLean. related this is what to Devon and Lily too. What was that? Correct, and she's related to Devon and Lily too, so. Yeah, she is, she is, with and, and Nate, and Mamie. And, and Nate, Bofar, and her and Justin yeah. Bofar. So how and come how would that be? As self righteous as Divine is, so let let um, cause this is a storyline that me and Cat Lady were discussing on Sunday. Imagine where, how hot it would be if Thomas and Audra Charles were a couple. That would be a hot couple, and that'd be perfect because he'd be perfectly be manipulated. Uh -huh. he, be he is easily manipulatable, and they would be hot together, and um, that might. And they might try to take over a company. They might try to take over Chancellor Winters or something. And that would get Devon's attention. And then once Devon does some digging and finds out about Emma, you know Devon would not like Thomas. So <laughs> that could lead to Emma coming back around. Perfect, perfect. This is a nice little connection. And then Justin gets to step in as the new CEO of Chancellor Winters. He's like the secret mm -hmm. mystery buyer, you know, that Mamie brings in. And he comes in because Justin is a perfect patriarchal figure. Mamie is there, but I would like Justin too. Justin would be perfect. Justin could be perfect for that. And you know, another thing is, this is a storyline I can see in YNR. This is for Tracy Nate 2025, hashtag Tate or Nacy, whatever you want to call it. So Tracy, and they, 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 Tracy's going, Tracy's going off to a book convention. She's the author and Nate is going off into a biz convention. And they just so happen to meet at the same town because they get stranded at the airport, they get a hotel together. And then she's like, she's like, she's like, uh, Nate goes, Tracy. And you know, they start bonding, whatever. They find each other, they get involved. Jack says he doesn't trust him because of what he did to Devon and everything. Next thing you know, uh, Tracy gets him a job at Jabot. And next you know, he gets a CEO position. They can get married. Listen, guys, this they is can hire a surrogate. They get, listen, I think this five, this couple would set wine off on fire because it'll be a couple that nobody's expecting, but it has all the storyline potential. And he's gonna become the next Mr. Tracy Abbott. Come yeah, on. and um, and I believe he could carry her up the stairs in a beautiful scene. <laughs> <laughs> and let's, let's play, that, play that sweet music. Like I need it. I need to get Tracy Abbott on 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 here on an interview on an interview with us. Like because I'm just give Nate a child, a Abbott and a Hastings and a Barbara. Yes, like come on, this is just. I know everybody, I honestly think this will be perfect because like, I think they'd have the most beautiful love story, similar to Matt and Vanessa from Guiding Light. I, guys, I could really honestly see this. And then look at look at Gemini's come to, but no, Nate doesn't want to push the chair lift button. You know what, Gemini? Stop it. DC's not going to stoop to your level because he knows that Tracy Abbott has lost weight, but he's not going to comment on her, on her weight because DC is a respectable man, Gemini. So how about you, as a, as a good woman that you are, Gemini, how about you take DC's example and just smile with that million dollar smile. Just leave a smile emoji, Gemini. Don't be insulting Nate like that. I mean, Tracy like that. And I would love it if we then saw Nate and Jack verse to verse let's go toe to toe with each other. That would be amazing. That, like I mean, the storyline potential that could come from that would be beautiful. 
Um, last day says, I don't trust Nate. I've never liked him since day one of him being on the show. He's not good enough for Tracy. He's not good enough for anybody. Hey. So let me defend um, Nate here. Let me defend him. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. But um, everybody deserves a second chance, okay? Nate, um, he went through a little midlife crisis, all right? At the end of the day, Nate wanted to be a doctor. He wanted to be the best doctor that he could be. Devon took that away from him. Devon and Elena, they played games with, with Nate, and that messed up his career. Now, DC wants to blame Elena solely. However, I blame Devon, too. I blame Devon, too, because Devon was a hothead. He punched Nate carelessly. Nate's hand hit that glass. And now Nate's just trying. He tried to transition over from that over to um, to to the business sense. But you don't understand. When, when you lost his medical license, Nate lost a part of himself. So he's trying to... He's trying to, um, that's just not easy for you to just try to do that. He was at the top of his field. He worked his ass off in medical school to be a good man, to be a good doctor. All right. Last that. And now he he had to start off from square one. He doesn't have that patience. He's not a spring chicken. Okay. Um, Nate is in his forties. So he wants, he wants to do that. And he wanted his cousin to support him and hear his ideas. But Devon is so dismissive and self-righteous and so un uninvolved. Like, even did you hear Devon not that long ago when he was talking about Mammy to Tucker saying, oh, uh, well, um, I was adopted and she, I didn't, I didn't raise her. Like, I don't really know uh, so like, like that. I mean, I just, I really, yeah, I really yeah. she really, she really not my family. So yeah. But yeah, when he sees, he's like, Oh, hi, Aunt Mammy. So like, come on. So it's just Nate had his reasons to do what he did, but he learned when he got humiliated by Victor Newman and he knew he's like, no, screw that. I'm never going to. I'm never going to do nothing. I, I will never have no peace at the pie at Newman. So I might as well go back to his fam to my family company. He finally learned his lesson. Now he's a good man now. So I'm giving Nate the benefit of the doubt because he's he's showed me that he's willing to grow. Now you can go, DC. And the thing is with Nate is that this is the thing, guys, with Nate, is that Nate has always been a good man. Elena cost him his medical career. I blame her because she should never put two cousins against each other and she was crying about i had to do the right thing you didn't know what he was going to do walking in the office you exposed him before he even had a chance to i blame Elena because she caused him a medical career when he worked so hard for and he was trying to be in the business world it was having like crisis did she support him no she did not have his back she was not a real woman she did not stand by him victoria did though i'll give victoria a little bit of that credit victoria still had her issues but she was a real one she stood by nate when he needed it nate was a good man he was going through so much and where was his support where was who was going to support him and be there for him this good looking man with these hazel eyes, these eyes that can see into your soul and could find out if they're stealing from her or not. Who was going to be there for that man? Hmm? Who was going to be there for that man that when Nate was? And, and so it's like, that she would have his back. She would hold it down for Nate. I really believe, I mean, Victoria could have almost did it, but because of the impulse of Victor was tough, but Tracy can do it. Tracy can do it. She's the woman for Nate, and I believe it, guys. So Tracy and Nate, 22, hashtag 2025, guys. That's why I can't paint that I'm all like, that's the camera I'm all right now. <laughs> for those that's two. Right. And um, Morpheus says, Nate treated Elena like a dog. Look, Elena survived, okay? Elena, she's not even on the show she anymore. She was acting okay? like a dog. She should have had his back. Well, she actually wasn't acting like a dog. Dogs are loyal. <laughs> Is Devon still a white man pleaser? Not a white man pleaser. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> <White> man pleaser. <laughs> I'm dead. Nate can say he's sorry, but they don't have to forgive him. But they did because he's a good man. Nate, Nate was Nate was going through some things. And I'm glad Elena's gone. She went back to Baltimore, wherever she came from, crying and sniffling all the time. She's not a real one. She can't she can't handle the greatness of a man that he is. But talk about a total 360. Do you think this time last year I would have been sitting here defending Nate all that time for the last three plus minutes? If we would have took him back, rewinded back the clock this time last year, you would have told me, Kyrie, you're going to be sitting here defending Nate Hastings. That way I would have told you you've lost your motherfucking mind. But, but now everybody's wow. defending Nina. Do you notice everyone's defending Nina? And I was the one, I, I like to think I paved the way for the Nina defenders. 
up today. I paved the you way for y'all because I was defending her since Nixon Falls. I paved the way for y'all. Bow down. I just <laughs> you did though. Everybody goes goes through stuff. Not everybody gets to have a happy life. Why is Nate problem so important? I get that he lost his medical license because of Elena and Devon, but I just don't see it. And then Morpheus says, "Ugh, Victoria, Tracy will be there for Nate. Absolutely, she will be there with some she hot will. love making." And don't she you think will. that? And you know their loves. Don't you think their their love scenes will be hot too? Mm. Tracy will be so happy. We will Nate. He will be so. I, I could just. That 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 couple would light the canvas up. They tried to put Tracy with Kane actually at first, who was Lily's ex husband. But for some reason, they said that the there was rumors that the actor didn't want to do the scenes with her, which is ignorant. I'm just saying he could have just um they could have had him put a little mask on and do just do what he had to do. But I'm just saying, but so unprofessional. I'm, right. Like, can right. you imagine how that must have made Beth feel, the actress playing Beth feel, that he was like, ah, uh, yeah, I'm not doing this. Like, that yeah. just that really made that woman feel so insecure, too. Like, yeah, she's I such mean, a professional. She's very professional. You know, and the thing about it is, like, I would like to see Tracy and Nate together. I would like to see, I want to see the Barber Winter Hastings Johnson Barber Winners clan, see this is what happens. All the black people gotta have all different last names. This is what happens to get confused. Though. So I would say this on my videos. Why the black people gotta have five different last names on the aggressors? You notice on soaps that whenever I bring this up real quick, is on soaps, whenever characters come in, like EJ, when he came on Days of Our Lives, he was EJ Wells. But to not make this confusing, they eventually just made him his name Demira. We're just gonna get too confusing. We have too many different last names. Chancellor Winners. None of them are even winnerses. Well, technically, Lily's the only winnerses, winners, and she's not even Neil's daughter. Technically, she's biologically Malcolm's daughter. It's a hot mess. Why do I have to be the black women? Why are it's a hot mess? And then, how many last names does Dominic have again? Dominic Abbott, Chancellor Winters, Kane, Ming, something, 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 something. So, if you want to think about it, Dominic is technically a McCall, a Chancellor, a Hamilton, a Winters. Abbott. He can also be. A Newman. Uh, okay, yeah, five. My last names. My last names about. Good five last names between him, uh, Devon, um, Abby, and Chance. It's about good five different last names. Like, who wants to write all that down? Every time, every time he's in school. Like, you know, when they're in school, they teach you. They teach you how to write your first and last, how to spell out your first and last. You got to write all this stuff. So you got Mamie Johnson, Nate Hastings, Lily Winders, Devon Hamilton, and okay, so it's four of them. It's the four of them. So so Mamie Johnson, Devon Hamilton, Lily Winters, and Nate Hastings. And Mamie is what was about Mamie? Now yeah. Frozen. Kind of, sort of, technically. Kind of. All right, my back. Uh, you're still frozen. I'm back now, right? I think. Am I, am I still here? Can you hear me? Now I can. Oh damn. Yep. Yeah, now I can hear you. Okay. Now you're back. Now you're back. Okay. So I was going to say that. Maybe he's technically not a barber. Phyllis, Phyllis has destroyed enough men. Nah. Now. We need to add Nate to her. Nah. nah, definitely not. Definitely not. And then I agree with last day. Tracy could get any man that she wants, but she should choose to want Nate. Okay? Because Nate is a good man. And Abbott also. Yeah, he got way too many last names. But oh, he was he's Abbott too. Yes. That's right. It's a lot. It's a lot. He will never have to worry about going broke. Okay. <laughs> yeah, never, true. Never. he's gonna be okay he for a minute. Well for life. Okay. He that boy that boy is all set for life. And I never responded to Spider Quick earlier talking about Kyrie's. You need you need to gift. You need to gift us. I don't need to gift Spider Quick nothing. Okay, that's not how life works. People work harder. 
long and hard for their money, okay? So if they, you want to choose to use your little snotty allowance to go to become a member, go ahead. If you don't want to, if you don't want to become a member, I'm fine with that too. I'm, I welcome each and every, every each and every person. But don't act entitled to for me to give you a membership each and every month. That is not going to fly with me. This is not. You could take that privilege somewhere else because that is where I draw the line, Spider Quake. I'm just saying. That just, you know. <laughs> Petty, but I had to say it because this is the truth. Well, it hasn't been as bad as Albert Petty Bostick these past few days in this chat. I love Albert. I'm like, wait, wait, wait. Okay, we're not going to get out of subject because I don't even want to talk about it out here. You know what I'm talking about. Albert Petty Bostick? I don't know what Albert, Albert is. Petty no, Albert, Albert Boomer Boston. Boston. He's pretty. We still love Albert, though, guys. He's been Albie. Those I use years. your candy money. I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, that's, that's funny. That is hilarious. But. Oh, I th and now I really know where 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 DC was going with that about the, the level of petty. Now, now I really know. Took me a second. He's been Alby these past few days as broadcast. His, his multiple his other oh, alter oh, Albies taking over. Look, my guy Al. I gotta defend. I, I, I'll defend him without saying it. But look, my guy is keeps it real. Okay, he he keeps it real. Okay, all he's saying is. He genuinely loves and supports all of it and, and genuinely cares about each and every last one of his subscribers and his members. And he does his best to give 110%. And he doesn't and he doesn't sit there and say he'll only do that if you buy him a coffee each and every day. That's all Albert is, Albert is saying. That level of entitlement is what Albert is sick of. Just like that level of entitlement that spider quake said that was the second day in a row he said give me give me a membership we should not have to pay for a mem for a membership well i don't have to why should i have to pay for your membership either so i'm just saying that's just that's a two-way shriek so you see that's just that level of entitlement okay you see, you like it's you because, because, it's spider spider because because he's just a kid so i'm trying to teach him i'm trying to teach him right however um <laughs> other other people who are probably like 50 something even though they look like they're like 80 70, 6, 60 or 70 years old they still haven't gotten that memo yet so all, all Albert is trying to say Albert is trying to set the record straight and trying to tell them how it is you don't sit there and use your audience like pay pigs okay um because people work hard I'm for them I'm gonna play devil's advocate on two notions here because first of all start this with was 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 quick uh huh. I can't even hear you. If that was Queen Jess, say give the. Okay, am I back now? I think I'm back, right? Okay, here's yeah, the thing. So with Spider Quake, I feel like I'm back now. I think I'm back, right? Okay, I'm not but for no more. With Spider Quake, I feel like if it was Queen Jess, you wouldn't have seen that way anyway, because. Because you guys see Spy Quick for some reason through a certain lens. So everything he does is seen through that lens. Like he could be saying something oh, totally off point. Totally but then Spider Quick is like, oh, he's making people uncomfortable. Or like he's being entitled. But it's somebody else going to say, God, like, Jack, because you see them differently or you revere their opinion more, they're seen differently. Now, the second point I try to make about whatever you felt about what's going on, the, the coffee stuff, whatever. People are allowed to do certain different things in the channel. And I don't know why Albert is. <laughs> I say thing. I'm watching this and be like, "Yeah, these you talking crap." I'm not talking crap, but I'm just saying though, is that if another content creator tries to do a channel a certain type of way, and I know they're going through some stuff, where is the compassion at? Albert knows better than that. He knows better than that. He knows better. No, he knows better. but every day though, also, every think, also, day. But also, I what? think the reason why is because your interaction you have with that content creator, and so Albert, this I think that's where all that energy is coming from for both of your sides. No, but that's I took that way beforehand. You love Every... real. No, no, no. You want me to keep it real, but I felt that way before, long before that incident happened. I was trying to find a way to connect with that certain content creator, so that's why I tried to introduce the the whole Danny thing. I get he didn't understand that, but. Um, but okay, but it was just like every single time I'm on there, you're always begging for money. 
begging for money though like each and every day it's always something it's always something with you but you don't understand we all the content through. creator asking for his subscribers to support like just like how we say people to ask for likes and likes please like share the sharing the video is free but um every single day you expect to do that like even like um because like albert was telling me when that what that person said when they when they were doing their show or whatever, who's gonna buy me lunch today? Like, well, how every single day you expect somebody to buy you lunch? Like, come on, that ain't right. You know, I think it is. You see, this. You know, what? I'm gonna say this. I'm not gonna say no more of this because you know we out here. This is not the never Zoli, but <laughs> I still stand in ten toes support of that content creator. I mean, I agree with everything they do, but I still stand 10 toes support. But that's all I said, because it's not the numbers only. I got to give us the <laughs> exclusive Clark Industries shareholders meeting. It's not a shareholders you meeting. A, you, the next time you will be at a Clark shareholders meeting, okay? And then we will we will say the name next time. But I'm just saying, I, my, I'm 100%. I'm, I'm my, my guy, Albert, is not the villain here. So you're not going to be villainizing my guy, Albert. Who's the villain? Who's the villain? Who's the villain? Who's the villain? If y'all feel he's the villain, who thinks he's the villain? Because <laughs> you, you keep saying, he keep thinking that you're making him the villain, but he's not the villain. He's just telling I'm the truth. He's not like the villain. I never even mentioned the word villain at all. He, he is a heroine. Villain. And you see, because even Susan knows exactly what we're talking about. And she's team Albert too, okay? And you see now, team... it's, just, it's just dick writing right now because he don't even know what the situation <laughs> is. So <laughs> I am team unified, unifying the subcontent creators. That's the team I'm on. That's we are I'm unifying, on. but no, we got to stand up for the truth. We got to stand up for the truth and what's right. My audience is not pay pigs. I feel where this is coming from is because the interaction you had, and that gave Albi, Albi Bostic, the go ahead to now. <laughs> Go with this edge. He's always want to go from there. It it's gave, it gave him Albert. the ammo. It's not Albie. First of all, it's Albert Boomer Gaslighting Bostick. That is what he's <laughs> saying. It's okay. So we go, if you're going to address if you're going to address my friend, you're going to address him right. You're not going to call him Miss Albie. Oh, I'm not Albie. Well, his altar has been taken over these past few days. It's not him. Nope. I know he's not in his right mind. It's not him. It's Albie that's been taken over. <laughs> uh -uh. I'm defending my guy. All right. <laughs> So, because listen, you know, listen, the thing is, like, I know sometimes content creators, we may not always agree with how everybody does things. So we have a thing because it's out. Albert, I think the way he's on his channel is amazing. I love his structure. I love his setup. He knows I tell him all the time. And you guys know I love Albert, but at the same, not but, I love Albert. But in addition, no, I love Albert. In addition to that, in addition, no, but in addition, I feel in that addition, when we I see want, it. I want you to read this question. <laughs> Now I'm gonna read it, but I will say that we got to give other content creators grace. I think that is so important. Because listen, this is a content creator that has supported all of us. We supported all of us, and so we're gonna throw that to the wayside. We can't do that. Look, I, I, I'm not saying that guy's a bad person. Look, I, I think um, his content just isn't for me. Okay, I just prefer someone like you or Albert or Twerry or. Brock TV or um you know someone lively someone with more he's definitely lively come on let's don't even do that don't, on, don't even do you know he's that man is lively he's he's bringing the liveliness come on come on like no you are lively like, look at you you got your million dollar smile you're a very good looking man why wouldn't I want to watch you each and every day every time you're on my screen you you just scream charisma you are all that but like him, like, come on, like, there's nothing there for me to connect with him. But you, on the other hand, are your, I mean, you, you got, the, you got the looks. Albert got um, the cool factor. Brock TV has the funny. Twerry is also funny. I and, love um, I love her energy. Yeah, I love her. That's, that's my girl. I love, I love me some Twerry. Okay, um, listen, listen, I, I I totally understand you guys' concerns, and I don't want to say too much. Like I said, this is like this is like the the general public lie. You know, like how like family be like, oh no, we're gonna talk about this when we get home. That's how they're, <laughs> that's how the members live. It's like we gotta wait till we get home, talk about this the real stuff. When we get home, wait till we get home, we talk about it. <laughs> but what I will say is this: is that I just know this concert is going through a tough time, and. But I want to see this concert really prosper. Yes, I do believe they can, but I just know they're going through a tough time and. I, I get it. 
we're gonna talk about this when we get home when we get to the show. <laughs> you, know, you, you will be on my members live. You know I do them on Friday on Fridays and, and um and Sundays. You are gonna I'm be gonna on one of them. I have to come on one of them and get my my few mistake because you know here's the thing, like you know, all of us as soap consecrators will have our different approaches. Like I mean, I always give all the approaches that we all take, right? Even with even with, with Albert or with you, like in some things I even do guys might not always agree with, right? Of course, right? But I'm giving this benefit of the doubt to the soap content creator. That's what I'm gonna say. I'm giving the benefit of the doubt because they have been a support. They have supported my channel. They have supported the sanctuary. I know what I sound like. I sound like one of those people like who's like endorse a politician, even though the politician is like not well received by the general public. I know it seems right now, but I really am because this person really has supported my channel. So I'm really gonna give that like that 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 counts for something for me. That counts for something. There's support. Good for Absolutely. you. And I think and I think he he might even support mine too. Because like I said, when I when I see when I see the analytics, I do see that profile. That been like they said, people who have watched you. So I I do see his profile there as a public. Oh, we can see that. Yeah. Um, oh, let me find with, out with that YouTube recap. Like it shows you. Let me you find should. out. Where was my honestly, I hope to get to the point where you and Albert at where I can do a members live and do something like that. And you know, and you I, I think having a, a a paid members is the most sense. You don't have to ask for anything further from your members. It's a guaranteed monthly thing, and that's them paying for content they've already been enjoying with you. I think it's I think it's a brilliant setup, honestly. And I'm really proud of you and the the progress you have made in such a short time. You surpassed me. I've been here for a minute. So you surpassed me. I'm proud of you. You have really done your thing, Clock Industries. That's why I call it Clock Industries. You guys are, like I said, it's like a Clock Industries. I call it that, Clock Industries. You've really been doing your thing, so I'm really proud of you for doing that. And then, let's see, and then, and then Jim and I had to throw the little shade from, from, from my past. That was that was the past. Well, actually, no, I do have my Fabuloso over there. But still, <laughs> Kyrie's only buys Fabuloso, not coffee. Yeah. I, I don't know if DC was there that day for that for that tea spilling. I I put that video on private the next day, and then Darby says Kyrie's laying it on thick. <laughs> With when I was complimenting you, I'm not buying no damn coffee or lunch. I'm buying I'm buying only Fabuloso. I'm dead. <laughs> po political answer, uh huh. And I'm not watching no video that would make me go crazy because um that reminded me of another of another that content creator that Albert brought to my attention the other day. Not 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 to whoever we could say that her name was Melanie Mack or whatever her name is, the one that made that homophobic ass comment called us all all LGBT fags and um really like yeah. soap opera creators? No, she wasn't a soap opera creator, but she called. Um, this this ug this ugly chick named Melanie Mack um, called all LGBT ones. We're all about we're all the f words and we're all sinners. And, and she, that she's praying for all like yeah that crap pissed me. Uh, I, was I don't so want to watch it because I don't want that stuff showing up on my timeline. Because you don't watch one video like the whole rest of the stuff starts coming up on the timeline. Exactly. I don't want to. But I you damn right I reported that because I don't know that was very ignorant how she did that. I was I was. I was very heated. Like I pretended like I was like, oh yeah, well, I don't really care. But like, no, I was really angry about that all damn day until I vented with my best friend and then I got over it after I said all what I had to say. But because like I, I said there there are some even so content creators that I feel I'm gonna say this for when we get home for the for the for the for the, for the, for the shareholder the clock industry shareholders meeting. Uh, because there's some I feel like are very, very open about something going on in their lives, like way too open. And I'm like, you know, I really want to protect them kind of in a sense. But what's about this on the, the shareholders meeting? Yeah, she wanted to talk about this clock industry shareholders. That's a clock industry shareholders meeting. Type of exactly. But this but this chick wanna hide behind religion and then to insult to be homophobic. Like I was like, I was not here for her not one bit. Yeah, because that's I feel like it's always tough sometimes, like. I have to honestly admit being like gay, like the, the types of like vitriol you might get from time to time. Like I was at Disney, my boyfriend last week, we were holding hands and I was kind of nervous because my mind, like I'm a professional, but I also got, I'm also from Bridgeport and I got my tennis shoes on just in case. <laughs> so, 
whatever y'all want to do. <laughs> like I was over there, so I was like, that was in my mind. I was like, you know, I'm a professional, but I was going to tennis shoes on. I'm from Bridgeport. So what's up? It's the case, you know? But it was Disney. Somebody was acting stupid. Nobody was acting stupid. Yeah, we, was sure. good. we was good. You know, it does make you nervous sometimes. And when you see or hear about stuff like that, people doing, it's like, damn, like people are still doing this kind of stuff, but what are you going to do? You know what I'm saying? Exactly. But at the very least, but I am stronger than I would have been a few years ago because a few years ago I would have reacted way worse compared right. to how I acted now. So I'm a proud bisexual man and I'm not going to let nobody take that away from me. So therefore, um, which technically, because her, hers was ignorant anyway, because basically she said, oh yeah, that that I'm, um, oh yeah, and the, and the very few of the LGBT, even though I'm going to make it very clear, I don't approve of your sinful behavior and da 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 but um, but I, I am hoping that you that you come across on the other on the other side and that you stop that you stop living that sinful way. So basically, in her ignorant words, so when I'm with a woman, that technically cancels out when I'm with a, when I'm with a guy then. Right. So as long as I end up with a woman afterwards, then that then that clear then that clears that clears that all up. But everybody else who's with a guy right now, uh, any guy that's with a guy, we're all a bunch of sinners and we're all going to hell, pretty much. You know, it kind of reminds me because I think I'll say this on I'll say this on this because I don't mind, even though this is a general public live. Um, I remember a couple weeks ago I had a conversation with my mom mm -hmm. where I had to say to her, listen, like, you know, like because we I she she knows, but I've never like um, told her that I was like dating someone, some of them. It's like, we just, we didn't talk about it. But I was like, we're going to acknowledge it today. And I mm -hmm. said to her, you know, listen, like, you know, I am gay. I know it's tough for you to accept. I told you since I was 12, I'm now 30. This is 18 years now I'm making this conversation I'm about to have. And I said to her, you know, listen, like, whether it's this guy or another guy, it's always going to be a guy for me, you know? And this is where I'm at. And I know it's a tough adjustment for you. And I was like, I know you can see this. You probably already seen it. She goes, yeah, I already seen it. I was like, yeah, even Stevie Wonder could see it, right? We both can see this, right? <laughs> so it's kind of just like helping her understand those dynamics. And it's having to have that conversation with her was very freeing for me because, you know, I know for my family, it's a dynamic we just ignore with me, right? It's like, it's like I ignore dynamic. And I was like, I don't want to ignore this anymore because it's making me uncomfortable. It's like, I can't be authentically myself, but everybody else can. And I'm making myself uncomfortable so everybody else can be comfortable. What sense is that? You know? So it's definitely, it's definitely can be a balancing act at times, but it takes a while. Because like I told my mom, this was 18 years of making. I told her 18 years ago when I was 12. I'm now 30. So it's like, you know, let's, let's, let's be vibe. Like, let, let's get reality. Like I'm going to marry a man more likely. We're going to have kids, we're going to have family. This is what's going to happen. And I told her that in a sense of not looking for her approval. Cause that's what I'm not looking for your approval or your validation. I'm just telling you so you know what's going on in my life. So no one can come to you and say, and then you just dip your head in the sand and say you never knew, you know? Exactly. My mom, my mom and I had a similar, had a similar boundary when I came out to her. She's like, she's like, I, well, she, well, because first of all, because she felt she kind of felt bad because like when I said when I when I um because the day before I came out to her, cause I remember it was like a day you and Albert were doing a collab about something. And um and then I was feel I was feeling some type of way because I wanted to say something and then I couldn't. So I said it on my stream. So then I was already it was very public and I knew she was subscribed to my channel. So I was like, oh, crap. So I thought she already saw the video when I was when I when I put um, what do I want? At, I put I st the video is still up there too. That for that that stream I did that night, the impromptu said, "What what expectations do I have as a bisexual man?" And then I was like, "Oh crap! I do have to come out to her." I started that morning. I, I came out on TikTok, and then got got plenty of support there. And then when I did when I did build up the courage, I was like, "Yeah," because I was afraid that you were gonna disown me once doing that. Because I know with my with my because my I do have a brother that's gay and um they're they're not really close. So I kind of thought that, that was the reason. But she's like, no, that was never that's not the reason me and him are not close. I always knew that Brandon was gay, but I never really thought I never thought that you were bisexual, but that doesn't change anything. That doesn't change anything. You're still my son or whatever. But like we have a boundary for the most part though, but she made it clear that she doesn't really want to hear about the deep any real details. So I'm cool. I'm cool with that because I don't really want to talk to her about that detail. Or, <laughs> well, except for what happened on on my birthday with whatever, and then I told I told her about why I was mad about that because I had so that was a story with C. Yeah, with the C whose name shall not be mentioned. Is that for like? <laughs> 
Where, is that when the, the, the family gets together on Friday and Sunday to talk about the <laughs> Oh, no, no. Yeah, 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 that one. Um, wait till we get home, right? Wait till we get home, we'll talk about yeah, it. We'll, we'll wait until that, but yeah. But that was the only time I broke that. I said, I, I said, I know, I know you have your your boundaries, but you see, this is why I cannot stand this boy here. <laughs> no, I just deleted the comment. Okay, <laughs> well, uh, okay fair enough. Let's show up with the live stream replay. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, well, <laughs> Matter quick, I was supposed to keep defending you. <laughs> Come on, oh. Matter quick. I've got you out of jail so many times. So many times out of you, uh, out of these these chat jails. So many times, Matter quick. It's giving Jason Morgan. I'm Diane. Come on, <laughs> <laughs> Jason Morgan and Diane. I'm dead. But anyway, but I was gonna ask, I said I know you're bounded by it, but I got I got a vent about this. And then, hey, Alyssa. But outside of that, but you know, but I really do understand what you, what you yeah. thought. I felt, but it felt like such a relief once my mom, once I told my mom. Yeah, it's like once I don't have to like hide it. But it's not really. But I me and him are not really all that close. I mean, we're cool. Like she, he messages me like once a year on my birthday anyway. So I feel like until I get into an actual relationship, that's when I could tell. That's when I would tell him, I'd be like, you know what? Well, hey, um, yeah, this is my this is my spouse. This is my partner. Yep, I'm by. I, I've known for years. I didn't feel the need to tell you because why? What difference would it make? You know, that's the crazy thing is too, is I feel like on soap YouTube, I can feel pro bueno. My, I can feel so much more open to talk about these things. But if I was like a regular YouTube soap consecrated, I probably would not put any of this stuff out there. Maybe it's because <laughs> I know people don't watch soaps. So I feel like, okay, like we have a good audience for big, but that's not so huge. But I will say though that like, you know, these situations have taught me a lot. And, you know, even dating now at this age, it's more serious because now it's like, okay, like what's gonna happen with, you know, potential marriage. Like, you know, now, like as I was dating now, I had to like have more of these kind of conversations. What do you see like, where do you see kids? What do you see, da, 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 are you out? Like all these different conversations. And finally having my mom, I think it made it real for her because it's like, I'm not 12 anymore, nor am I 20, like, my 20s or my early 20s and more now i'm like 30 so now it's like it's about to get real like my son is about to possibly marry a man one day it's going to happen and so you know it, it, it's a it's a process for her and that's her process because i already had 18 years to digest all this and be comfortable in my own skin and that's gonna be her process and i told her i was like you know my mom so i'm sensitive to how you feel and that's part of your journey um and i said to her that you know if you have any questions let me know she doesn't ask questions she knows i hang out with him like, you know, after class, sometimes I go see him. I was I went to go see him right before I, I came to do this live, actually. I, I gave I was like, I'm gonna stop by for like 15 minutes. And he's like, What you doing? I was like, my live going on. And he's actually subscribed to my channel. He's a huge supporter of it. Um, he doesn't watch soap, so like, you know, he could be so into the content, you know, which I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. I was gonna still talk my stuff a little bit, but <laughs> but you know, being comfortable with myself, it took me a while to get to that point. But I, but it's like once you're there as a person, comfortable with yourself inside and out, it's just it's such a different trajectory you're gonna get from the world and the outside. You know what I mean? And it really resonates a lot and it radiates. So that's my wish feel. Yeah, but yeah, but it's true. But it's true. But I'm very proud. I'm very happy for you, and I'm very proud of you. Do I'm you proud see? of the success of this Clark Industries that we see. I'm proud of this. And I'm proud of Albert too. Now, me, me, me and Mr. Albert, we we'll have our we we'll have our chat probably in a private off uh, board meeting from Boston Enterprises. But you know, I'm, I, <laughs> I am really proud of you guys. I'm really proud of the structure, especially that you've created, Kyrie. I mean, just getting monetized and doing your thing. So it's I think it's amazing. I think you should be really proud of yourself. I am because it's just. Whoever would have, whoever would have thought. I was just like, I remember I was just doing reviews here and there, and then because remember, remember I wasn't like, like, even when I was doing my GH reviews before, but it wasn't like the same of what you get now each and every day. Like you could yeah. tell, like, you know, I'm giving you like 100 percent of my authentic self. Like before, I gave y'all like about a good solid 80 percent outside of that Betty video. That's when y'all got the raw truth that day. <laughs> When I was cussing, when I was cussing Betty out, but before that, I was I felt like I was giving my, because I was still trying to stay like semi closeted in certain ways. So I was trying to like you know, because I was like, oh, because I'm on, I'm on as Kyrie's Clark too. So that's my real life name. So I was like, uh, 
Yeah, so I would try to do that. But now I, I like give no fucks. <laughs> so it's like, but you could tell like I'm much more authentic now. And I could tell. Yeah, like, from a, from a karma about it. Yeah, putting yourself out there. By the way, my my the DC, the D stands for Dewan. So every time I hear you say Dewan in the chat, I'm like, oh my God, that's my name. But I'm like realizing, okay, you're talking to Dewan in the chat. Well, yeah. <laughs> And then Gemini says, when I met Kyrie, he was a loud mouth. <laughs> now he's still the same. <laughs> no, but I was much more, I was much more like reserved though a little bit, like compared to to what I was and to how I am now. And that really grows. Like, Look at Clark like, Industries, the empire that's that's growing here. And I do love and I love and one thing that I'm really proud about this channel, like I really Felt like I've grown like a nice young and the restless audience in here too. Like we, I feel like with my channel, like the young and the restless really does have a good spotlight here in this channel where I'm not like really afraid to do like, like I don't care if whoever watches general only watch, like if some little brat like Spider Quake only watches General Hospital. They're not going to take over my stream. I have no problem. Y'all not defensive. I'm protecting my man, Spider Quake. Hell no, no. He's but a good I'm, man. I'm I'm gonna talk about my young and the restless, and young and the restless is a popular, is a is a popular thing on my channel here. And I created I, I got Candy Ray, Tamika, um, Peggy, a few others. I'm really I'm extreme, Nadia. Like I'm extremely proud of that. Um, mm. I think Kyrie has stumbled upon his niche in the soap opera content world by putting up characters on the screen and talking to two slash four of them. It's something no one else is doing and it works. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Because I've been thinking about adding that for, for a minute, though. Once I saw that virtual that virtual thing and it's very easy to set that up to, all I got to do is just put, it, just put a nice picture together, then bam, just like that. Um, I like that. Finding, finding your niche is so conscious. It's so important. Your style, you know, kind of like your style that you do. I think I like, I love it. I, like your style is very, it's definitely very, it's very distinguishing. You can very definitely distinguish it from other content, so concentrated. So I like that. I like that. Oh, you said my style, yeah, absolutely. Look, like, Kyrie's honestly, before I found you and Albert, I was terrified to admit like, to like soap operas because all my friends dislike them. Now I have somewhere to talk to them about. Absolutely, that's what that's what it's about. This is a non. This is a non-judgment. This is a judgment-free zone where no yeah, one. I don't know anybody watches soaps on it. This is like the only realm. Of, like this is why. This is why I have to have soap YouTube because like this is the only realm I can talk to about soaps. Nobody watches soaps real life. That's why I'm worried about the gates. That's why I'm real worried about the <laughs> success. Because ain't nobody watches soaps. Um, but uh, I feel like this is why I appreciate about this honestly. So I, I totally, totally understand where you come from last day because nobody watches soaps. Like nobody. I mentioned passions the other day to one of my professors because I said his class like an episode of passions and he's like passions what's that and everyone was like what's that what's passions it's a soap opera soap opera what's that I'm like damn we really oh, in trouble. Gemini <laughs> says I'm spending I'm spending I'm sending Kyrie some damn coffee money. Ow, ow, ow. Where's the? Don't you mean my fabuloso? <laughs> I got the apple fabuloso right in front of me. I still can't believe I did that stream. That that was so reactionary that day <laughs> when I did that stream after after my New Year's hookup went kind of wrong. I had to the next day <laughs> spill all the tea about that. That was <laughs> on the shareholders meeting. No, that was actually that was before I was monetized. That was that was live. That's why that's why you you keep hearing that, that joke every day about the fabuloso because I told the Can truth. You send that video. I gave the story. Uh oh, that freeze up. I froze. Somebody froze. I think I froze up, guys. Uh oh. Is he coming back? Okay. All 
is he is he coming back? Okay, um, you back? Okay, you're back, right? I see you now. Yeah, I see I see I see you too. Okay, okay. What's that saying? And then, and then here, goes, here goes Gemini saying Kyrie's didn't pay his, his yes, Yeah, because I got you my phone, it shows I'm still on here, and then you were the one loading. So I was like, okay, what's happening? Hold on. Oh. Sometimes it's a Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi Wi-Fi cuts. Out. I thought it was a Wi-Fi here that happened. This is connected to the modem. So the modem is oh. is still good, but just they do like to act unpredictable sometimes. Right, that Gemini say that Gemini, come on now. Come on, Gemini. Mia kicked the cord because she's tired of hearing that damn story. Ow, 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 I'm dead. I asked my friends why they dislike soaps. Soaps are just, they come off so, I, I could see why people don't watch soaps. Like, I, 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 I get it. I really honestly get it. It's not how it was back then. Um, you know, people are not interested in them. They're just, they're always considered cliche and cheap. Like, especially Days of Our Lives. I would never tell someone to watch Days of Our Lives. As much as I like it. <laughs> I don't. I wouldn't tell someone who's like an, a potential new soap viewer watches our last. I'd probably tell someone to watch B and B or GH to get them started on soaps. Why is too slow? Um, days is too cartoonish. But if I really had to keep it real, it would be on my children life to live. I get someone started on a show or GH classic GH Bob Guzzi days classic GH. Most of my wrestling fans don't watch soaps, and then. Dewan, Dewan Morphis says, me and Nikisha got passions canceled. Ever since I called um, Dewan the, the Ron to my Albert, to my Albert he, he he took that role seriously. So that's what he was. Wait, Morpheus is Dewan? Huh? Yeah, Morpheus, Morpheus is Dewan. Oh, he changed his own name. Of, oh. It's funny. I, I, knew, I knew that from the very beginning when, when he tried to change his name, but I knew it was still him. Oh my gosh! Rather watch YouTube daily vlogs because it's some it's current somewhat. Even though GH sucks right now, I love watching subs. Absolutely, I love I love um, my soap operas. But I love the Young and the Restless, the Bald and the Beautiful, General Hospital, and I tolerate Days of Our Lives. But I'm really waiting for Nicole and to get her baby back because think about it. Nicole was ready to put hands on on her own daughter for talking trash to her too much. Imagine what she's gonna do to Salone and Melinda. Okay, mm -hmm. she was ready to to slap her own daughter for saying the truth, for throwing the truth in her face. Yet they stole her baby. Mm -hmm. You know damn well. Yeah. Nicole, How much longer do you plan to go on for tonight, though? By the way. Huh? How much longer do you plan to go on for tonight, by the way? Oh, oh yeah, we're we're wrapping up. Okay, okay, okay. In a few minutes, yeah, we're wrapping up. Um, but I was just saying, that just reminded me, when you said Days of Our Lives, that reminded me of the Nicole situation, but yeah. Days of Our Lives, NBC Daytime. Hello. I've missed those promo days. Days of Our Lives, a shocking twist will turn the residents of Salem upside down. Days of Our Lives, NBC Daytime. I yeah. saw Nicole's daughter. She made she made Nicole herself for sure, but absolutely she did. But I but on my final thoughts is I am Team RJ all the way, and I am so proud of you, RJ. You got my support from here on out, and knock Zenday on his ass again and again and again. And I'm gonna root for you every single time. Now, DC, do you have any any final thoughts? I have to say that I am definitely Team RJ as well. My final thoughts are, I am really hoping that this resurgence of the gates coming through can spell something positive for daytime, but I hope daytime has been learning its lesson through the years and will incorporate all that they've learned through the gates. And this is a Procter and Gamble soap. We haven't had a Procter and Gamble soap since 2010 from As Well Turns when they got canceled. So this is a chance for redemption. This is a chance for new beginnings. Let's see what this can do. Absolutely. But yes, everybody, you have a wonderful night. I will see you back at 10 p.m. Eastern. Well, today, April 17th. But yeah, <laughs> have, a good, have a good, but have a good night. Um, and thank you. And thank you very much, DC, for joining. You have been delightful. And our next meeting will be on the shareholders meeting.
We'll see you guys in the next we'll see you guys in the next shareholders meeting with Clark Industries. <laughs>